What's going on, everybody? Welcome to week eight, the final week of the regular season of the KCM. After this is the semifinals, we got a great lineup here, so let's jump in to game number one. All right, as I pull up the lineup here, we are on Citadel with Royal versus Paralyze. Quite the lineup we've got today, don't you think, Shun? Pretty, pretty sick. Oh yeah, it's really sick. I mean, we got Action Jadong and Sulky all for the Zerg. I'm actually looking at like a Zerg favored lineup right now because we do have uh, Sharp coming in for the Terrans here, which I like to see a little bit of a ability to fight against Protoss here. And they are bringing out Paralyzed for Team Protoss, which is you know a guy that's not as much stream time. I think the last time we saw him was on Dark Origin. He got crushed to a tank push while he was going carriers against Light. I think before that we saw him against Scan on Vermeer while he was top right and Scan managed to sorry um, Scan was top right and managed to to crush the carrier threat there as well so i'd like to see a little bit of a better showing for him this time yeah I, he hasn't made it into the asl this season not a lot of up-and-coming protoss players have um that's the, the the lineup's definitely looking stronger for taren and zerg i definitely agree with the sharp pick here bringing him out he's a great versus protoss player he's just a great all-around player was performing very, very well at a very high level. And we're going to have Royal come out against Paralyze. And are we going to see another carrier game? I mean, what do you think about carriers on Citadel, Shun? I mean, I, I think they're good, actually, especially with vertical spawns like this, with the, the way you can attack on the vertical axis and use this, like, dead high ground space to abuse the carriers and also threaten the natural Terran third. Might even force the Terran to take a much wider third base, which is suboptimal. Uh, could even force the Terran to take in the middle only at some point. That's also not so great. So, I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of feel like carriers would work pretty good here. I just don't know if he's going to navigate that into a two-base carrier or three-base carrier timing. I imagine it'd be closer to three carrier, three-base carrier where he takes at twelve o'clock maybe. Maybe it's uh, it's a tough map for Terran man. This this map overall and the middle of the map is very wide open. Uh, I think it favors more like shuttle-based play, but. We, we'll, we'll see if Paralyze is feeling confident to go for that or if he just wants to rely on carriers here. Um, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of dead space on the right-hand side of the map, but I can just imagine Royal snake, snagging up a bunch of bases in the bottom left if his opponent really was going right. carrier. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a kind of game Royal can easily win. I mean, he, I think that, yeah, he's definitely the favorite to win, even in a situation where he's maybe caught his pants down a little bit. We also saw he went for very fast CC timing, just basically like a 15 CC, like bunker expand, like not even making the Marine first. He got a nice little early SCB scout. So he kind of like has a nice little read on Paralyze now, can take this early economic advantage and then go into his gas while Paralyze tries to catch up with his own Nexus after going range. We don't see a Zealot out here and uh, Paralyze is going to drop his own Nexus and Roll's not going to have too much pressure. He will be able to grab his gas, no problem. Everything going pretty well here for Royal so far, and Paralyze is going to be playing a bit of catch-up. We're taking yeah, a quick third playing, Nexus. He's going to be playing catch-up, and Royal's already got the mustard, and right now he actually cancelled his range to throw down that Nexus a little bit earlier, 18, rather than having to wait to like a more like standard 21 kind of timing, so he's going to be squeezing out that Nexus as quickly as possible, but will now not be able to put on as much pressure onto this bunker and force a bit of a tax bill for Royal to have to pay as early on as he would like to. We'll see what the follow-up here is from Royal. He's playing his game right now. He's got his game plan rolling. Um, Vulture Drop, maybe? Do you think Vulture Drop would be good? I, I feel like this map has so much space in the main. You can already see Paralyze putting a, a pylon down at the very bottom of his base. Maybe he's aware of the, the threat of that there. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and with the, the, the alignment of the main base as well, it's very easy for Royal to come up here and do some kind of Vulture drop, drop play or something. So... He'll be very mindful of that uh, all game long, and he might even just keep some Dragoons back in his main base around the six minute mark, just because it's such a common builder. The, the only thing is that we did see a much slower CC timing, sorry, slower tech timing out of Royal, but he is gonna be getting the second gas to catch up really quick. So he's gonna explode in his gas count once this comes online, just a little bit slower in his tech timing. So he might not have to commit as many forces to the anti-drop, but you know, it's still a possibility. Well, look at this. He only built one factory. So this is looking like a starport. There it is. Dr Vulture yeah. drop indeed. Um, I like it from Royal, but I think it's pretty predictable here. Paralyzed should be able to figure out that this is coming. 
Yeah, it's not only predictable, but um, it's also slightly slower timing. So Paralyze should have all the tools available to deal with this very efficiently. It's just a matter of whether or not he'll do it. Oh, he's even building the Robo a support bay down here where there's a pylon. So could be hiding his, obfuscating his, obfuscating his attack a little bit as well as having some more buildings down there, maybe slightly more vision, so we can definitely see this thing coming. Drop point does arrive. It'll be important that he reacts quickly here, but he might be out on the map, you know, clearing mines, or uh, we don't have mines out here yet, but we should have them soon. And uh, taking this third, looks like he's going to go ahead and set a probe over there already, start to lay down pylons uh, at that wall. Make sure that vultures can't, once they get out on the map, uh, easily make their way over there and deny that. And a tank pops out first. Huh, that's not what I was expecting. I thought we were going to see straight into vulture since there's no dragoon pressure at the front. But looks like he wants to get the tank out and just kind of mask what he's doing here. Yeah, he still has to make at least one tank because even he doesn't know how many gates are behind this. So he could have been like Nexus into like two, three gate obs and he's mm -hmm. worried about that. So he could have show up with like three, four Dragoons very soon. And he wants to make sure he's at least one tank to micro against that. And right. also obs, also hide the fact that he's going for his Vulture drop. Though. It's much harder for Paralyzed to figure this out if he sees a tank. Two tanks. All right. With the second factory done, Vultures will start to increment out here. Just getting rid of these eggs to free up some space. Moving between the natural and main is already hard enough on this map, but having those eggs there is just an extra encumbrance. So he gets rid of those. He has the dropship on the way here, but the shuttle is already crossing the map. It's making its way over towards this main base. And it could end up scouting here what's actually coming. Although, he, we just heard the load up and the drop is going to head out. A little bit of a turret ring here from Royal. Denying this shuttle coming in, so... Paralyze has been denied. Will the same thing happen over on this side? Oh, the sh observer, Ooh. observer, just barely not seeing this dropship coming in. And the Reavers all the way across the map. The Dragoons are not in the main. This could do a lot of damage. Yeah, this is a lot of damage that Royal can now dish out. A lot of probes going down. There is a little bit of an evacuation going on right now. Four probes have gone down, now five. And he's in a little bit of panic mode right now because he's at least six probes. So this, and he still has these two vultures that maybe come around and maybe kill one or two of these gas probes as well. Really good play from Royal. Going to be all three of these gas probes as well. Still maintaining the vulture alive. Keep it, And maybe even catching one of these. Well, yeah, not going to catch another probe here, but still really great effort from him killing that amount of economy and denying that much mining time for such a low investment. Just two vultures with a drop. Really good play from Royal. Yeah, save the dropship as well. So this is a perfect situation from Royal. His game plan has gone absolutely the way that he planned it. Nothing has gone awry here just yet. Paralyzed hasn't been able to put on any pressure at all. And we've got like a minimum number of turrets on the field here. I'm going to sneak out with a few vultures. The nice little drop play to circumvent that reaver pressure. And we don't have a full wall over here. Okay, we'll get the dragons in the wall. Very important that he does not allow any more probe damage to come down. But as you get more probe damage, as you get more worker damage in basically all matchups, more and more worker damage just makes the situation so much worse. It's really important that you plug up all the holes and not take any more worker damage here. Otherwise, you will just kind of fizzle out in this game. Absolutely saying. It looks like Royal's got a good read on the game state as well. He's going straight into five factory, delaying his armory and just going into academy. So his choice of tech is eBay into academy. Just got to five fact and put on a lot of pressure. Getting more and more probes at 12 o'clock, as we can see as well. He was at one point equal on supply, around about 70. So now he's now paralyzed slightly racing ahead in supply, like which is quite normal in PvT. But yeah, so far, like a great game state from Royal. He's gonna get a third CC behind these factories as well. He's not like gonna be committed to this push that he wants to do at some point by any stretch of the word. Like he can still just attack and expand at the same time and he's gonna maybe explode onto the map in a big way. He's gonna have enough tools available to him to weather any kind of storm paralyzed can like rain down on him with. It is still a very difficult map, so we have to see Royal slowly push out here. If we make any mistakes right now and our uh, expansion gets shut down, all of this progress that we made by killing off probes and slowing down the economy is going to be undone. So he needs to take it slow here. Nothing is pressuring him right now. There's no fourth base on the way here for Paralyze. He's sitting on three. A lot of gateway production. Uh, and he's ready to try and stomp this out. There is a shuttle here, but there are quite a few Goliaths ready to fight. I don't think we have that critical four Goliath count where you can 
two shot. Oh no, he does. He does have the the, the four. He's even got a fifth Goliath here, just in case. With four, or with two shots, he can take out that shuttle. So he's gonna slowly push up here and uh, try to take this base. I guess he's going for the base. This this mineral only here on the left hand side. Yeah, it looks like that for the time being. It could just be that he wants to secure the ridge line for the time being. But um, either way, like, it's great that he went for this fifth Goliath because he's probably fairly certain that there's a strong likelihood he will lose one of those Goliaths to a Reaver Scarab or something and wants to just make sure that even if that was a transpire, he does have this four Goliath count still available to him to shut down that shuttle play, still one shot all these observers and put a lot of pressure on Paralyze here, taking away the map control, starting to control the center of the board more, and now is going to enable him to come out Take this third base mineral line, which is a lot safer because he can now utilize this ridge line to his advantage to try and get a little bit more cost efficient trade. And Paralyze doesn't have the kind of production that he needs to kind of break this position right now. He is currently going up into his gateway count, but he's only got like six online right now. Whereas we got like basically the same amount of factories for Royal. So no way could he ever produce enough units to really cost efficiently deal with his Terran army at this point in time. Not going to throw his army into the defensive position here of Royal. He's sufficiently slowed down enough. He's he's taken it slow here so that Paralyzed feels that there's no opening to actually get in and deal any damage. And it looks like Paralyzed will have to take a fourth base. Where is he going to go for that? He's actually sending his uh, Dragoons over to the top left and the dropship. He spotted that coming in and he's gonna take some more probe damage here although he does have one cannon oh there is a tank inside here so this could actually deal a lot more gonna fire on that cannon not targeting down probes unfortunately looks like he is going to lose the tank he does lose that tank cannot deal with this dropship though dropship just gonna hang out over open space it looks like just gonna sit here in this dead area can't bring dragoons over there to clear that so that's going to be a thorn in Paralyzed's side for some time now. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a thorn in, in the back of his mind. A splinter just going to be annoying him. He doesn't want to have to make a Stargate or a Scout or a Corsair or anything to have to deal with that. It's just way too much of an investment. So he can't just swallow that and, and you know, kind of just try and deal with what he's... Oh, wait, so there's so many Dragoons to these mines. Great play from Royal, pushing up the eastern flank there, doing a great body block on those Goons and then killing them with the mines. Like, so far, Royal's been playing pretty flawlessly in this game. He's really showing his class and showing why people like Paralyze just aren't up to the same kind of tier as him and I'm not able really to kind of give him much of a challenge and just being able to come out onto the map and take this third base so easily. Yeah, he's done a great job here. Ooh, that <sighs> mine just about connecting there. I mean, got like a couple of pros, but disaster has been averted for now, I suppose. Paralyze going to take top left and... Yeah, look at the factory count now. Just looking at this factory count, you know that Paralyze is probably going to get bold over here soon. But he's going to buy some time by dropping a bunch of units here in the back. Maybe he can kill a big chunk of supply depots and slow down Royal in a significant way here. He's got to target the center of these supply depots if he wants to get full damage onto them. Kind of not doing that right now. There we go. He's going to start to pick off a lot of supply. Royal just going across the map, though. Confident that he can clear clear this out with rallies. He's just going to try and kill Paralyzed right now. And the, the position that he's got, he could absolutely do it. But if he messes up and it doesn't end up killing Paralyzed, he could be in huge trouble because so much damage is happening in his main right now. Wow, he's really supply blocked at the moment. He's killing a lot of depots at the moment. Royal cannot produce anything. Look at his money just racking up. And he might even lose a few. If he's not careful, he does lose a couple on the tail end of that transfer. Now starting the push forward to Northern Threshold as he makes his way to this ridge line. Needs to secure the high ground against these dragoons to trade well. There's some D-Matrix units. Another couple of storms and shuttles coming in to try and bully this army back. It does force him into a tactical withdrawal. Tries to re-engage on um, once more, but he has finally cleared up the, the main base situation. But he might even lose another depot that's burning down right now so i don't know royal's taking a lot of damage he can he can recover he can make a lot of depots and recover this position but meanwhile that'll give a little bit of time here for paralyzed to set up this um north northwest like rally point he wants to just start throwing down a big amount of gateways and just go up to like 12 to 18 gateways and just start churning out units maybe he can come out onto the map again but right now we're all setting up his fourth base at three o'clock he's gonna be able to attack on this vertical axis and put a lot of pressure onto paralyzed which hasn't even started a pylon or gateways in the northwest just yet so that means that right Right now, Royal has a big window, just um, kind of stabilize a little bit, build up an army, and attack with like 170 to 180 supply, and actually just maybe potentially crush Paralyzer. You know, Paralyzer faltering a little bit during that. I, I think that 
uh, the situation was actually really, really good for him. Uh, having all of those units in the main base, dealing all that damage, and then at the same time, Royal trying to counterattack and, you know, feeding into a lot of these, uh... Oh gosh, he's gonna lose all these shuttles so quick. That's a great defense from Royal. Two of the shuttles do manage to survive, and we've got Storm. Not bad, getting a few kills here. Six kills on that. Definitely worth it here so far, but... I mean... This is not the critical damage. We've got Royal with a, a fourth base already. He set that up. And Paralyzed was very slow on sending his probes all the way to the top left. He hasn't set up that rally point, as you were saying, yet. Um, that's still kind of a vulnerable base. We've only got a few cannons over here. A tank drop could easily shut that down. Yeah, it's uh, it's still a bit of a rough spot here for Paralyzed. Even though he did take a good trade. Diving into the main, dealing all that damage, and stopping the counterattack, it's, it's still a precarious situation here for him. Yeah, I'm not sure really how he's going to navigate this going forward. I was curious if he would do a late carrier switch or something, because we haven't seen any like pylons and gateways going down on top left just yet. I'm curious what's in the main base of Parallels right now. It doesn't look like there's anything crazy, just a couple of forges and a few more gateways made in the main base, just a, one singular rally point. So it means he's kind of on the win condition that he doesn't get contained this game, which does give a lot of wheelhouse over to Royal to kind of have a little uh, play with. And if he wants to, he can just keep attacking Paralyze in the coming minutes and only just contain this one rally point and then start knocking out these other bases like Whack-A-Mole. And uh, Paralyze is going to try and shut them down and coming into the 3 o'clock position. Just try and get another Storm drop here on the SVs. There's not actually that many SVs here to Storm anyway. So right now, not a big committal of uh, econo economy here for Royal to be disrupted. A lot of his uh, minerals are coming in right now from his natural expansion, this mineral only base. So not a high saturation of SVs here for Paralyze to keep exploiting for the time being. And slowly but surely, Royal is creeping out in supply. Mount his 170 mark and is finally starting to decide to attack. Yeah, he's going to take over the center of the map here. And I don't know what Paralyze can do about it. With all of his Templar just being sniped and taken out there. As he was trying to drop the center right. He doesn't have the critical splash damage necessary to break this push. And maybe having a few more Templar in these shuttles. But just three shuttles here. Can he break this? Can he push this back? Royal's going to get up here onto this high ground ridge. And if he does, that's going to cut off the one rally point that Paralyze has and potentially force him out of this game. He's going for another drop here. This is really shocking to me. Trying to get in here and deal some more economic damage. There's almost no SCVs here at all. And so many vultures just clearing this up instantly. That was a very piss poor attack. Yeah, that was really flimsy from Paralyzed. I don't know what he was thinking. I kind of get the idea, but he should have realized the execution wasn't available to him. Now, though, Royal steaming ahead with his grades finally kicking in. Three attack, two armor. That's a really big power spike for Terran, getting that plus three weapon, starting to kill Dragoons and fewer shots and cleaning up these zealots even faster. The vault, he's having to turn around now. Paralyzed going for a counterattack, trying to pull the Terran back. The Matrix comes down on the, the further south tank, but it's like there's not enough forces to really deal with this Terran threat still. It looks like Royal is going to leave a few of his vultures behind to keep pressure on at the natural expansion, force a probe transfer, start sniping some of these units coming out like the Templars and Zealots, and cause inefficient trades for Paralyzed to have to deal with while he's defending back at home, clearing up these forces nicely, not even losing his command center down here as well. Going to be t killing some of these high Templars in the natural expansion as well. So Royal's getting so much cost efficiency right now. He's also ahead on supply by about 35 and has a tech advantage and has a great advantage. I don't see how he's going to lose this game. Yeah, things going about as well as they can. In a bit of a crazy move there. Paralyzed tries to get a counterattack going, but shut down completely by Royal. Now he's going to come back to this position that he was securing a little bit earlier as he was pushing across the map. He's going to come back up to this natural and close off the windpipe here of Paralyzed, putting him into a chokehold, not allowing his rally points to move forward. And Yeah, we're going to have Paralyzed, I think, retreat to the main base now and just try to shuttle units out. From this point he's not going to be able to leave his natural uh anymore royal is going to siege up right on the edge of these walls here and start to shell the main 
Yeah, Royals creating a Terran made Grand Canyon in supply right now. Ahead of 50 supply. Beautiful mind drags and zealot bombs on these four siege tanks. Trying to play whack a mole with the expansion at 12 o'clock. The, the win condition for the Terran players basically contain the rally points and then start to hit these expansions. Beautiful storm on these tanks. Royal desperately trying to unsiege his tank, reposition them, realizing they're a little bit too clumped up here and giving a little bit of breathing room for Paralyzer to try and exploit had he been in a better position. But Paralyzer is not in a good position. He's going to just GG and tap out. Game number one going to the Terrans here, knocking out one of these Paralyzer players. And surprise, surprise, it's going to be Paralyzer. Well, not too much of a surprise there. Game number one, Royal able to take down Paralyze. He was brought out here as um, just someone that we're giving a chance, I guess, for the Protoss squad. They are so far ahead right now. It's really not even necessary to bring out the, 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 the A team here, don't you think, Sean? Oh, absolutely, they've already broke out into the stratosphere right now. They're no longer in a low Earth orbit. They are currently in satellite. Uh, orbit at least and uh, do not need to worry about contending with the points anymore so instead going to be a little bit of screen time to your boy paralyze give him a few games this season at least maybe but nonetheless going to be eliminated quickly as we now go transition into a, a much more exciting game between sulky spawning in the bottom left as the blue zerg and royal the top left and sorry in the top left as the blue zerg and the bottom left royal as the red turn i'm excited for this game for sure yeah the current ASL champion here, Soul Key. What's he gonna bring out on Troy? Looks like a 10 pool, 11 pool, or over pool. We've got that Overlord out now. So an over pool is gonna be the choice for Soul Key. Hmm, yeah. what, what, what are we gonna transition into from here? Are we gonna go for quicker speed or are we just gonna get our natural out and, and kind of, uh, you know, circumvent an eight racks here? Yeah, I think it's literally just like he just wants a way of circumventing the eight racks and just trying to optimize against the possible range of play on Troy from Royal here. And Royal wisely, though, are going to be doing a very standard racks timing. Nothing too crazy here from Royal. And this is going to line up nicely with the, the choice of play here from Sulky going for this earlier pool, which is going to slightly hinder his hatchery timing just a little bit, you know, it's like 20 or so seconds slower hatchery than the natural expansion around the go for 12. So he's going to delay him a little bit here, but. Nonetheless, I think we'll see a very normal game despite these early weird timings. It's just a Sulky trying to min-max against the potential range of play from Royal on such a strange map. Yeah, it almost feels like standard play as the Terran players is really, really good here because you know that the Zerg has to prepare for something like an 8-Rax. They can't be allowed to... Uh, it mm -hmm. can't be allowed to occur here. There's so much buildable terrain in the middle to place that Rax and... Losing your natural is basically losing the game here. So th there's, you know, a great, um, I think a great game plan here from Royals just to play it completely standard. And you know that your opponent's going to have to be forced uh, into playing like a little bit off, a little bit of an earlier pool to try and uh, compensate for the potential. Yeah, it looks like we see a little bit of a mind game thing here where we, Sulky's making up to six slings. It's going to force Royal to pull two SEVs off the line to block the gap on the left. Just delay a little bit of mining time for the compensation of making those early links and not getting uh, a couple of uh, a drone extra two there. So it's going to make Sulky really safe to any potential pressure from, from Royal. We're just running out some naked Marines right now, but also will force him to delay a little bit of mining time. So good compensation. Um, achieved from Sulky in making these early links and he will also catch his SEV which will deny scouting and uh, force Royal into an uncomfortable choice of getting a very early academy and sacrificing even more economy to confirm the, the Zerg tech here. Just a two barracks play out of Royal and he's going to be able to just check Sulky, make sure that he's building all of the necessary defenses um, by coming out with that Marine Medic push here pretty soon and I mean, Soul Key, with the high ground, it really does make a difference in how many sunken colonies you actually need to make. Uh, but you do still need to make those proper defenses. You can't just completely skimp on sunkens, but you, you're you not likely to get broken here on high ground. Right. I mean, you can go up to like 10, 12 speedlings and defend that way. But, but either way, you need to invest something in your defense, either in the way of sunkens or lots of speedlings. And... Depends on what kind of play style. You see someone like Jadong maybe making a lot more Zerglings, a lot less Sunkens to try and uh, be a bit more aggressive and utilize those links later on in the Mutaling mid-game phase. But here I think we'll see a bit of a middle middle ground approach from most players like Sulky where they try and delay their Sunkens as long as possible, make a couple of links and eventually just one or two Sunkens to defend that five-minute timing. Well, here's something interesting, right? Well, 
Soul Key is going to kill the assimilators here in the top right hand corner and he's going to take this as his third base which means that this marine medic army only has a single target it can only hit the natural and that means sunken colonies are going to be that much more effective right um mm -hmm. if, if you're going to take a third base and try to defend with sunken you have to build uh you know multiple sunkens at each base but here we can make an island uh, without even having drop play we can make that island and uh we can just defend at a single location and these sunken colonies are very close to finishing the sixlings are going to be really key here if he decides to commit he does not he backs away and soul key going to get away with this uh pretty greedy play of taking the third base here while only just building a couple of sunken yeah you delayed those sunken to the very last second you can see how close the timing was mapped out there the terran does move out four minutes 50 with a two rex timing if you're optimized and you've got you've hit all your mineral boosting and everything probably closer to five minutes if you're a foreigner not able to hit your timings but Either way, he's going to just barely hold on by the skin of his teeth very well, mapped out from him. And yeah, with the six speedlings, just apply a little bit of pressure and shadow the marine medic just to make sure they can't get away of just stimming across the map or anything too crazy. It means there's no timing for the Terran to exploit absolutely whatsoever. So now going to be in a great position here. He's also dialed back the economy of Ra a little bit by forcing him to go for these early scanners as well. So now Royal's slightly less optimized than being able to make turrets right now. He's squeezing out everything that he can and really sulky's not too fussed about doing a lot of damage with these mutas so uh, he's going to slow down the tech timing the barracks count of royal just as a slightly take him a lot longer to get into his four fracks and that will mean that um that will slow down the inventional timing that he'll be pressured out on the map and without having to worry about defending his top base top right base against um, anything but drop it's going to really make uh, sulky comfortable going forward and transitioning into a late game well look at this he's gone straight into a factory starport off of two racks so royal is going to have the option to do some crazy stuff like drop he could go into a very quick valkyrie here as well tank push. um tank push yeah that's a potential as well look at that arm are coming up here um royal has a lot of options he needs to uh, find a way to to actually put pressure on sulky here because he could even take more bases at this point um build more islands around the map you know, he could take center right he could take bottom right just kill the assimilators make more expansions and keep building muta to defend everything and you know world needs some sort of response to that so it looks like it's going to be valkyrie the answer here for royal he's going to get some valkyries out so he can push away the muta and then maybe go for some drops you know drop around the map or or go for that tank push like you were saying and just try to crush the natural yeah Soki threw down a very standard queen says timing around seven minutes so but because the factory was so early, there is still a window to do a little bit of a tank push. It's possibly, it could also just be something like mines or Karen booster for a, a mech switch. Very unlikely though. Yeah, so it's always going to be Valkyrie into tank push or, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, that's what we see a tank just pop out now. So I imagine it's going to be um, tank push from Valkyrie, Valkyrie support, using the Valkyries as point defense against the, the muters to reduce the map control potential of Sulky to slow this down while also guaranteeing a timing with the tank push at the same time. So he does need these Valkyries as point defense. He's making sure he doesn't catch his Valkyrie though. Okay, good micro from Royal. He's definitely got the slide down. If he can keep that up and keep sliding the keep sliding the Valkyrie like that, where it's basically running away while shooting, it'll make it much harder to be caught by Sulky, and he can get more and more value with this unit as time progresses. You kind of do need to have that micro down to utilize that unit at a pro level and get the kind of consistent value that's required to justify such a high cost. Oh, it's going after the tank here. Can he get the tank? He's going to drop everything here to get that, and he does pick it off. That's really going to slow down this push from Royal. That's a great pick off. He's going to supplement that with some more Sunken Colony here because he lost so many mutas. He can't totally fight this Marine Medic, so he needs extra units here. He needs extra defenses. There's the second tank, but with just one tank trying to push through, it's much less effective. He's going after the tanks here. He cannot get the kills on these Valkyries, unfortunately. Trying to put some eggs out in the front, but the Lurker aspect is not ready. There's not enough Sunkins here either. Just three Sunkins on high ground. Not going to be enough to stop Royal. Oh man, this is such a close hold, but... Royal just going to shove right through Sulky's defenses, completely crush this natural. This is it. GG can't hold on after this. Everything is falling apart. Yeah, this is just like Terran 101 at the highest level. You know how to exploit all the transitional weakness of Zerg players. The nine minute mark, just as they're getting their lurkers online and they're at their weakest, relying purely on Sunkens and Muters alone, essentially. Just able to completely pull apart the Zerg there. That really well executed attack. I'm really impressed by Royal so far. Yeah, that's, uh, that's rough for Sulky, man. He, um, 
He should have had a few more Sunkins. It does feel so unbreakable, Sunkins on high ground, but you cannot skimp like I was saying. And he did try to skimp there a little bit. He was trying to get into his Lurker, keeping his drone count high with just three Sunken Colonies there on the high ground. It's not going to be enough. You needed like four or five maybe to buy that time in order to get those Lurkers into production. And he didn't have to build any Sunkins over at a third base, right? That was an island, so uh, it's just yeah. it's just pure greed, isn't it? From from Solki there. It's pure greed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pure greed. That's unfortunate, man. Solki goes down, but uh, it's nice to see Royal on a roll here. Let's see if he can continue it. He's going to be taking on one of these two Protoss players that's coming up next. Mini going to be sent out next here against Royal. Blitz, why is the map such an interesting map here i really love the addition of these crazy two-player maps that we've been seeing absolutely and i'm glad that they've taken the old concept of blitz x which came before this which is basically this kind of the same map except they like, rotated 90 degrees and now we've got a much more vertical two-player map but i think that's much easier to balance as well it's really awkward to balance the maps where it's 1v1 and they're both in the, the bottom left and bottom right corner it's just so hard to balance that and I also really like the fact that we've got this big, like, um, this catwalk, which not only allows for early, like, shenanigans, it also allows a really nice tactical late game play with who can secure this, like, little island area of the extra gases and minerals. And there's also a back pocket where you can choose to prioritize more mineral income or closer to the center, which is even more easily shelled from the high ground, but also gives you more access to gas. So, yeah, I, I really like this. It is a very interesting map, and I think it gives a great position a jumping off position for the Terran player once you slowly shove out forward towards your opponent you can take your third base in line with your attack but then where do you take your fourth you really have to stretch out far into the left hand side and that puts a lot of vulnerability into your uh, game here as the Terran player so you're gonna see a lot of two base a lot of three base pushes out of the Terrans and you know, that'll be up to the Protoss players to prepare for that and, and you know, play accordingly. Yeah, so we're going to see a, a nice little gas deal here from Mini. Absolutely typical here. It would be very, very weird if he didn't try and get for the gas here. But trying to get this SCV kill with his particle beam, not quite able to do so. Quick repair, quick thinking from Royal. Going to deny that, though. The SCV is still two shot in that mineral line. So if Mini stays on top of it, rotates around, can come back in for the kill on the SCV at a later date. Right now, though, we're getting a little bit of a scout off. Sees the forward gateway. Understands there's going to be a little bit of zealot pressure coming from Mini before he throws down this Nexus. Yeah, not going to be able to finish that SCV off. But, oh, is Royal going to be able to get the eBay block here? It looks like he can't quite get it. Great play by Mini to have the, S or the, the probe there already. Uh, blocking that from occurring. And now he's going to be able to send this out straight across the map with no eBay block here. He can drop his Nexus. This is really good play from Mini kind of predicting what Royal's response will be here. Absolutely. And here's three Marines in the main base to fight this sellout, but not the easiest to, to do, really, because he wants to kill this gas at the same time. A little bit of an awkward traditional point. You're having to delay killing this gas to make sure he guarantees zero damage from these zealots. Instead, wants to try and buy time, run into the natural expansion, throw down the CC to try and race ahead in the curve just a little bit, but has to sacrifice some mining time to, to accomplish this. And now he's at a risk of being flanked here. One seller from the north, one from the south, as they try and pin some maneuver onto these four Marines, barely getting through the eggs, and one SPV is trying to block... We've been able to a good block here, but still getting surface area with the Zealot. Now we're going to get a few punches on those Marines, but so far does lose that Zealot for nothing and also the Probe too. So, so far, great hold from Royal besides having to commit these SUVs. Yeah, that was a great defense there so far. Only taking a couple of hits from the Zealot here. A lot of pressure coming out of Mini, but he didn't even slow down the CC. We're going to have no bunker here at the front for some time. Now Royal, after killing that first Zealot, feeling totally comfortable here to just sit and chill with these marines get that gas online he'll have to throw down, throw down the bunker soon but there's a third zealot coming across the map and what is this all these uh, scvs wow. being pulled here royal feeling himself right now he can come across the map and actually deal some real damage here maybe kill this nexus Mini, oh my Mini. gosh, he's gonna see it just now. What is his response? Is he gonna throw down he needs a, a shield, shield battery? Here. There it is, shield battery at the front. Mini, he's gonna have a desperate hold on his hands. That's so many SCVs to deal with. A Royal really needs to make this work right now. Two shield batteries at the front. 
Yeah, it's a no joke situation right now. One seal patch, he wouldn't even probably cut it. He needs at least one. He's decided to make two. They also will create a surface area denial for Royal to not be able to exploit. Now he's going to try and get around on the Marines. He has his probes cutting off the retreat right now, but the Zealots cannot find any surface area. He's going to lose two Zealots before the shield patches come online and can provide value. Starts are definitely trying to repair that Zealot, but now the Punk goes online. He can get this three Marines in there if he just can get through these probe lines, barely killing all these probes with the SCV's help. Does lose one of those Marines, so only two Marines left alive. Zealot still there gonna get trapped by those SCVs and now provide the attack to continue as these two marines can get inside this bunker and try and trap this dragoon between look at look at this beautiful trap here using the shield battery against mini double-edged sword situation as he gets the kill on this dragoon it's gonna put a lot of pressure on mini right now sam oh my god that shield battery trap is insane it's just insane here oh man royal made a perfect little box there surrounding all of his uh, Marines and preventing the Zelts from getting on top of them. A beautiful play from him. Really, really smart stuff. Uh, the the particle beam of the pro the probes was actually going over, was reaching over that uh, defensive uh, SCV formation there. But um, most of the Marines did survive, like you said. He handles that perfectly. He gets the dragoon trap. Now he's gonna kill the Nexus basically for free here because there's no gateway. To actually build any units to defend this and all we've got in the main is a robo i guess we've got a robo facility as well so a reaver should be coming out here soon that's really mini's last hope in this game after losing so many probes and his gateway here plus he's gonna go into the main what is he doing this is crazy oh man he can't get on top of the probes here you're gonna get force of probe drill get some probes at the very least the reaver will take at least 10 seconds to come online get the scarab fish he's gonna kill at least six to ten probes here it's a great little trader but he will lose to all these marines and the issue is that he's actually behind in tech he delayed his gas for so long that this factory is really slow there's actually not a lot back at home to defend against this potential reaver and goon play in the main base there is a small pocket here for mini to exploit he can come into the main base and do a lot of damage to royal if royal messes up this hold he hasn't got a lot of units available to him but he is still waiting on his reaver to come out so royal has got a tiny bit of time here to set up an adequate defense it uh, looks like royal's gonna start setting up some turrets here shortly he's got the ebay on the way not quite ready here just yet looks like mini might be able to just slip in at the very last moment here there's the turrets on the way but the Shuttle is already halfway across the map. We got one Dragoon here. Going to start to harass this natural. And this is a dangerous situation. Royal, he's done a great job so far. But the Reaver is here before the turrets are done. One tank is available. But the Reaver shots are going to take that down really, really quick. Taking one shot on the Marines. But it's not the greatest hit. And the Reaver is getting low actually now. Getting very, very low indeed. And the... Dragoon goes down. Oh, he gets the tank. Big kill there, killing off the tank, and he can juggle this Reaver forever. Yeah, Royal made messed up his mic that he tried to turn the tank around just as the Scarab detonated, but that meant the tank took full damage and didn't uh, didn't survive. So a little bit of misplay there from Royal trying to be too picture perfect with his uh, execution. And now I'm going to play the price a little bit because this Reaver was probably going to go down. Now he's be careful that this Reaver doesn't... Okay, does manage to dud that Reaver Scarab on those SCVs, though still losing a few of these SCVs one at a time to this Reaver in the main base. There's a turret to the north that's not currently covering this pocket in the bottom right here. So Mini can kind of sit here and exploit this for a long time until more marines and tanks are available but the royal's going to try and come in for a trade but now he's got a oh look like he's dudding the scarab on that love bit of luck there for royal to be fair like that reaper scarab most times probably wouldn't dud in this case did and that's a little bit unfortunate he does have two tanks now so he can start to challenge this reaver once more he has got his turret in the natural expansion so he shouldn't lose any more SCVs, and he has these two tanks and now escort the SCVs back into the main base and try to stabilize mini still hasn't got this expansion online so he's desperate in trying to get critical damage here yeah, this is an absolutely crazy game right now. Another dudded SCV that one supply depot worth its weight in gold. And it looks like he's going to try and fly out here. Oh, man. I think all the money that uh, Mini's been making here back at home has been going to the uh, Scarabs here. And he's going to head back home, maybe pick up this second Reaver and try to re-expand. But was this enough damage? I don't know. I think Royal held on pretty well and... Uh, in the end, I think that Mini is down and out still. Uh, he's not down and out per se, but yes, he's really behind. It's like like 10% um, 
mini and like 90% royal. So uh, right now though, he does have two Reavers available to him. So there's a possible ability that he can come in here and do some further damage to royal. So there is a way he can turn his uh, like low percentage into a higher percentage, but he has got a lot of work out for him. But so far, Royal is definitely in the driver's seat. He's ahead on supplies, he's ahead in workers, he's catching up in his tech, and Mini is so far behind the curve in every other respect. The only thing he's got going for him is that there's only one factory worth of uh, units coming out for Royal right now, so he won't be exploding just yet. So kind of there's a little bit of window here for Mini to exploit with some fancy micro in the main base with Zealots and uh, Reavers, but it's going to be hard. Yeah, what are we going to do here? This is really the question. Are we going to get, like, shuttle speed or something? Do we do we try, you know, put everything on the line here? Grab the shuttle speed, like, go for a big dive into the main, try to get as much damage as we can? Do we, you know, cut corners uh, and try to get, like, a... Okay, that's a pretty good shot there. Ooh. You know, dragging in the, uh, the tank shots with the Zealot and then going after some SCVs is... Very, very nice, but Royal's still got a big advantage here. Another two SCVs, not bad. Not bad. Mini really at the edge of the base. He's tentatively pushing in here, trying not to lose anything more while getting as much damage as he can. That actually dudded. Wow, that's uh, that's kind of crazy. Did no damage to that tank, but Mini's just going to back off for now. He's going to take a third, it looks like. He's trying to play this yeah. out in a macro game, even though he's got almost no probes. Oh, absolutely. That's why we see him doing these shenanigans right now, because he plans on a normal game. He just wants to siphon off a little bit of Royal's economy, a little bit of his advantage, because maybe he can claw his way back. He does have two Reavers available to him with this shuttle, which so means he can slow down any kind of counter push from Royal. And Royal did go into Armory um, after eBay before his academy, so he has no scouting information available to him. So he has no idea of what he can do or what he should do right now. So instead, he's going to get into his scanners, which will slow down his economy a little bit further. And then he's going to try and identify exactly what Mini's uh, build is right now. He has no idea. He has no idea this third base is coming online. He doesn't know if uh, Mini wants to bulldog him. He has absolutely zero clue what's going on. So he'll be very tentatively just building up his tank out, getting his grades online, and just sitting back until he can identify a game-winning state right now. I mean, that will give a little bit of breathing room to Mini to catch up, and he won't come out and be threatened for quite some time. Though, if he does get these scanners online and scout out what is going on soon, I imagine he's going to build a lot of factories and go and kill Mini soon if he can. Yeah, that's looking very, very likely here. Royal's economy is just light years better than Mini here, and uh, I don't know. I thought that Mini was gonna, you know, get shuttle speed, get an extra shuttle, build, build an, an extra reaver, put some zealots in there, and just try to get in, deal a huge amount of damage, like a game-ending amount of damage uh, to Royal. And if that didn't work, tap out. But here he's kind of gone middle of the road. He's really like. Tried to macro out of this with a bunch of probes being sent to the top left, but there's like, like look at how many probes are being sent up there. It's like six probes being transferred. That's like a, a drone transfer rather than a probe transfer. Usually you're sending like 12, 18 probes up to the top left, but he just does not have that economy. And Royal's going to slowly shove out here. He's not going to take any risks. He's got the full surround of these turrets in his main base. Uh, and Mini's not going to challenge that. Instead, he's just going to try and get some of his own gateways online and slow down this push as much as he can. But I don't know. I, I feel like this is a, a very low percent win chance here for uh, Mini, this strategy right now. Yeah, it's looking pretty low. I would still say it's around 5 to 10% for Mini here. Uh, Royal, though, um, is going to try and, like, change that even further by sending out this vulture drop he is also going to go heavy into his grades making this uh, science facility so you know all the way into 2-1 at least probably probably up he did sacrifice map control this game he went for a tank goliath uh, unit composition initially because he wants to make sure he can shut down any of the shuttle play shenanigans from mini and now he's finally going to go on some up with these vultures distract him on the left with these two vultures while the dropship makes his way on the vertical axis along the, the right side of the map here there is a, a pylon and robo support base spotting this so as long as he's got some units here to defend it he won't do too much but he might still get some probe kills here soon. Yeah, he just looks like he's going to get quite a few probes here. That Reaver is going to help to defend. And, oh, actually, he's just going to pull back out. Seeing the Reaver there is going to uh, tell Royal that he needs to bail out. I, I think he Mini kind of missed the, the bag there. Uh, there was an Observer spotting this over on the right-hand side, and he was kind of slow to react. He lo loses a couple of probes. Not the end of the world here, but... Like I said before, when you lose probes early on and then you start to lose more, every additional probe that you lose matters that much more here. And it looks like he's going to lose the Reavers too. Look at this. Reavers going to yeah, take a lot of damage. 
Yeah, and one of them was on low HP as well, so just like two shots from a tank will probably kill that low HP Reaver as well, because it's got 80 HP and red HP, so probably two tank shots will finish that off as well. It needs to be very careful not to lose that Reaver for free. It's the only thing that can really slow Royal down enough to give him any kind of fighting chance in this game. It's nearly 15 minutes, and he's only just now going to be finishing the Citadel of Dun to get these Zealot Leg Enhancements, go into Tem Templar Tech, maybe into Arbiters, or at least Storm Gateway Man to have some kind of splash damage to combat the huge army that Royal's going to be able to field soon. Royal being very tentative in the way he's pushing forward here, but it is a smart play, I think. Not getting, you know, ahead of himself here and uh, overextending, trying to get this third base online. He's just going to slowly take that and not allow any chance uh, that he can be broken here and that Mini can suddenly seize this game back. He's got three shuttles. And a dream here. How many zealots does he have piled up? You know, he was just getting, just now getting that citadel of a dune. So he doesn't have zealot legs, but zealot legs doesn't really matter if you're going to be dropping the zealots on the tanks regardless. So maybe he can try to break through here. Maybe he can stop this third base, or is he just going to go into his own fourth and try to even extend it this game longer here? Yeah, he does definitely have to take his uh, own fourth base uh, for sure. Mini's going to try and play like a... I'd say Royal's going to try and win in like f four to five minutes time with his uh, plus three weapons finishing. Whereas Mini's thinking like, I need to win this game in like eight to ten minutes time. Like he's just going to try and slow down the game state as much as he can. Get all the tools that he needs while using these sort of like poor man recall styles of speed shells being annoying as possible. We see now two Reavers coming out in the natural expansion of Royal here, forcing an SCB transfer, killing a few of these turrets, opening up this position to further harass. We're also now going to try and make his way into the main base if he can, but this turret on the high ground in the main might uh, dissuade him, so instead might just pull back to safety. Maybe kill these two depots would be a nice little compensation for his efforts as well, though. Maybe supply blocking Royal a little bit, forcing him to make more and more depots will slow down his economy just a tiny bit. Every hundred mineral depot you're making will make it slightly harder for you to churn out units so will delay his push ever so slightly every little helps in this situation for mini he's got everything up against it but he's slightly now pulling ahead in supply for the first time which is kind of what you need as pros you should be ahead in supply he's only just barely ahead in supply by seven so really really behind the game still is mini well yeah he's been just barely ahead in uh, bases here throughout this game he's gonna get his fourth base online here but after the third has already been established for royal and just a little bit behind the curve here it's totally understandable considering what happened in the early game and i mean it's impressive that minis even managed to sort of stabilize here that he's managed to make this into a real game um but this is this is about as hard as it gets here. This is this is the ultimate challenge for Mini right now. If he can actually bring this one back or not. Yeah, this comes down to Terran execution as well. So what Mini's also counting on is some kind of fumble from Royal. He's the, the right now the ball is firmly in Royal's hands. Where's a chance that Royal fumbles it? It's very taxing on the Terran player to methodically push across the map and control this amount of army this late in the game. It's very easy to find weaknesses in the Terran to exploit as Protoss, and that's what kind of Mini's gambling on. He's trying to say, right, the biggest win percentage for me here is to drag this game out and try and wait for you to fumble the ball a bit. So if I attack into you, there's no way I can ever trade efficiently and win. So instead, I'm going to stay out on the map, build up as much of an economy, get my infrastructure going online as much as I can, while slowing you down with these Reavers, going into my Gateway Man Templar tech, and hopefully can catch you with your pants down as you start to move out. Royal, he's going to slowly push here towards the center left. It looks like he actually wants to take another base right now. Ooh, picking up the Reaver. Very nicely done. Diving on top of that. And he's going to get a drop here in the center left. That is huge. That's going to slow down mini even further here he's like scrambling to deal with not only royal pushing forward here and fighting against his reavers but also this base over here oh man losing two dragoons without having an observer there to clear the mines he will be taking that extra damage and royal just kind of outdoing him here it, i mean this this is just pure royal this is royal playing a normal game he's not uh trying to you know just bowl him over as though he's got a huge advantage he's playing like, it's a completely normal game where he doesn't have that big advantage. And, he, you know, he's going to take every tiny little advantage he can by multitasking and pressuring this Protoss player. 
Yeah, we see Mini has elected to go for that snow style with the um, Weaver weapon upgrades, giving them plus 25 damage. 125 damage does enable them to almost one shot those Goliaths as well. They're left with just a little bit of HP with their armor, but. We also see like a 3-1, three, 3-2 three is about to kick in for Royal here. He's going to have a plus 3 attack upgrade. These tanks with the arc like shot cannon is going to be absolutely wrecking. Okay, there's the armor upgrade just finishing up. So plus 3 weapons is about done soon, I imagine. And that's going to be the trigger for Royal to go unless Mini decides to skirmish with him and bring the fight to him on this sort of like western bank here. So I'm not too sure exactly what will transpire. But we will see Royal continuing this drop harass uh, for the time being. He needs to be careful not to lose this dropship. Actually, do these, he just loses a dropship for free. This is really bad from Royal. It's a little bit unfortunate. It's not the most uh, end of the world or anything but it would be nice to keep that pressure out on that there's one thing that means to worry about anymore so now he can be much more fluid with his army closing the gap between the two armies of him and the terran player slowing down the advancement of royal keeping the counter attack offensive online always and a threat to the terran player will make it much more uh, of slower engagement for him and he have to very tentatively push across this catwalk now while still mini is definitely trying to finish off his max out get some more templars online so he has enough storm to be able to fight him he's keeping his arm out army out in the middle of the map is um Mini here, maybe thinking about pressuring for a counterattack, but I think he realizes that Royal's not going to be that scared about it. He's moving up slow enough that he's not too worried about the counterattack potential, and instead going to use his cap catwalk to full effect him as come up here and secure a really big foothold. Meanwhile, Mini still thinking about that counterattack. Yeah, it looks like he is gearing up for a counterattack here, and trying to hold on with Storm at the catwalk is a really good plan. This is such a tight area to try and push through, and Royal is really struggling to make any progress, losing a lot of Vulture to the Storms here. Another couple of storms going to go down. More vultures going to fall. Kind of running through those storms, unfortunately. Mini rotating back around. Looks like he actually will try to break this push down with his army, realizing that there's not that many vultures left over. Maybe he can get through here. Well, he did keep the army of Royal pinned back that entire time because of the fluid army formation. Now Royal is starting to send more reinforcements to the north, just as many circles back. Great army movement from Royal here, but he's just barely getting here in time, so not quite fully set up. Some window to exploit and with beautiful storms on the northern flank of those tanks as well. Going to very cost efficiently deal with those, and the rest of the tanks are unseaged and moving through storms. So, so far, Mini doing a good job of trading, as probably as best he could hope for, getting another pretty good storm on those tanks in the back line as well. As more zealots stream in from those rally points he's just barely got enough to overrun this position this is exactly what he was hoping for in this game to create a weird game state for him to exploit and royal has kind of fallen for the trap here he's getting hung by his own rope no way mini managing to bring this one back after all the chaos in the early game royal now looking like a limp rag here barely able to hold his own third base gonna try to shove out here maybe try to take out this center left um just securing a position here in the middle and like extending this game maybe try to split the map in half i think that's his backup plan right now but mini still has reavers on this side of the map he built a pylon up here he's actually starting to troll him a little bit what is this pylon for I think it's just a spot for uh, further dropship uh, play out of Royal because he's been using that vector on the left-hand side of the map quite a lot with his pressure. Um, meanwhile, though, we, uh, what was interesting was that the Royal was really counting on winning that engagement so he could take this fourth base of minis and like, attack and defend at the same time. Now he's not got fourth base. Now he's struggling to produce and he can't quite keep up with mini and he's in desperation mode as minis using these high ground uh, formations on the left-hand side of the map to overrun him and just putting down beautiful Sionic Storms over and over again, doing true damage to these Terran Siege tanks. Like 110 damage over 2.5 seconds, a lot for the Terran to handle. You kind of don't want to siege up under that, especially clumped up. So right now, Royal's trying to do his best to not lose as many of these tanks as he can. He's already had his tank count reset quite significantly in this game. He has got a lot of factories, though. He's had to churn out quite a few units at a time. Three machine shops as well, so he can produce quite a lot of siege tanks at the same time here. But it's taking him so long to get his fourth base online that I don't know if he's going to have the mineral influx that he needs to keep up with many in this current phase. This is looking really tough right now for Royal. He's setting up a good position here in the middle, but he doesn't have control over that high ground, and Mini is going to be able to continue to mine from that center left. Some s the shuttles are moving around the left-hand side here. We'll be able to shut down this mining. It's looking likely some Zealots, maybe some Templar popping out here. Oh, more Reavers being made. Really relying heavily on the Reavers, and whoa, what a shot there. <laughs> Absolutely. Eight, kills Eight kill. Wow. 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 That wow. is crazy. So much damage from that upgraded scarab shot. Just crushing the economy here of Royal. And now he's between the natural and this fourth phase. Uh, Royal can't even transfer any SCVs over here to get this mining once again. 
I was a nightmare for Royal right now. Like the one thing he's kept going for him was that he finally had this fourth base online to inject some much needed minerals into his economy. That's what he's struggling. Look at his gas right now. 200 get 2000 gas. He can't really spend it besides making mass vessels. He needs this mineral injection so he can afford more vultures and more tanks to be churned out to keep up with the curve of army that Mini's able to produce right now. He just doesn't have it. He's been delayed in getting this fourth base for so long because the CC was floating to the, the catwalk fourth of Mini to both attack and defend at the same time. Was denied that and now is being denied trying to mine at this fourth base. So he's really behind right now. So. Yeah, this is a nightmare indeed. I think Royal's going to wake up cold sweats in the future remembering this game and how close he was to the victory here. That's one of the most painful losses is when you have such an advantage in the early game and you manage to somehow throw it away and Royal here I mean, it, it, it's on him, but also Mini's play has been fantastic. Now dropping a bunch of Templar here. He's going to try and get some great storms on this high ground, but pretty good dodges so far. A lot of these Templars have been sniped. An EMP going down. We've got a lot of storm still left over, though. A lot of storm on top of this high ground. However, Mini is going to be shoved back, and Royal holds strong here. High ground cannot be messed with. Well, what was so beautiful about that engagement was Royal was very tactful in how he used D-Matrix there. D-Matrix pretty much the counter to Storm, negating that damage, maintaining the siege line, and keeping those tanks able to target fire critical units to most efficiently trade. And uh, yeah, so far Royal's done a great job of turning the tides yet again, tempo swinging back in his favor. Mini desperately sending out a small contingency of sales to this third base natural, trying to drag some mines into the SCV line, not quite able to do it. Um, but is a few more mines to help clear up these vultures though so now the pressure is still on these SUVs despite that failed mine drag attempt so might get a little bit of effort might get a little bit of um, SUVs for his effort here and get quite a significant damage to uh, Royal to compensate for losing this nine o'clock uh, nine o'clock base I think yeah he's gonna send more units down here but Royal now transferring some of his army over it it's just you can see how tight that hold was there from Royal by how few army or how little army is actually over here at the third base he brought everything over to that left hand side every single tank every single vulture to try and hold that and uh left e the entire defense of this third up to mine so now mini gonna try and exploit that by getting over here and you know trying to break down this base but a great position here with the supply depots and tanks uh, on the top of this catwalk will force mini back once again and mini gonna go ahead and snag another base over here on top of this catwalk it's gonna be hard to defend but i mean the center left is just gone royal may end up taking that base in the long run and that'll force mini into like a really weird situation where maybe he needs to try and take an island absolutely so and that's the current interesting game state we have right now is that actually the game state favors royal heavily because he can split the map horizontally deny this nine o'clock which will kind of be a weird situation where it's the map sort of split diagonally where mini's kind of forced to take this three o'clock island which is able to be shelled from the high ground which means he has to prioritize the mineral only uh on the right hand side so we can get access to one gas but two mineral lines which give him a lot of influx of minerals and deny that from being taken by royal but I don't know how he's going to hold on to that long term so he's probably not even thinking about that right now he's probably trying to think how can i win this game without having to take this island base if i can help it yeah he'll have to retake this uh, high ground on the center left i think that's the main priority here rolls kind of seated that back to him while he's taking bottom left there's also opportunities to maybe drop in the bottom left that's a very far outlying base but here we go some storms gonna come down here at the third maybe he can pick up a bunch of scv kills and really start to even things out well he doesn't get too many just five Beautiful kills EMP. the emp yeah coming in clutch there royal gonna hold on to the majority of his economy at that third and should be able to transfer down to the to the bottom left here pretty soon Ooh, some vultures sneaking in here gonna deal some big damage to the mineral line here of mini mini does pull those probes out of the way in time clearing out the mines here not too bad probably about the same amount of damage here as what he got with that templar drop just moments ago yeah i would say the game state slightly evening out the only issue we have here is the expansion path choice for both players right now though we're looking much better for royal he can just take this back pocket expansion the bottom left he's more than happy with that he doesn't need to take nine o'clock for the time being and also has the opportunity to take nine o'clock and push vertically as well if he so choose which would be very good because this catwalk is not so difficult to defend as well so much easier for him to cover his flanks while taking the left hand side of the map for royal meanwhile mini's in a little bit of a precarious situation has to both 
skirmish of the Terran endlessly to try and get some kind of advantage. He's not really done enough damage to the Terran's economy at this present moment. He's heading the shuttle down to the bottom left. Maybe he can find something there. The SUVs have just transferred. There's some turrets in position. They might lose the shuttle, but could get some... Oh, it's going to be a reaver, actually. He might get a good reaver connection. Can he is not quite going to get the connection. He's going to dud, it looks like. Not able to kill the SUV train, unfortunately, for uh, Mini here, but going to maybe kill a few of these vultures for his trouble, but that will be cleared up um, very sh in very short order. And that's going to be another little win here for Royal. Another little feather in his cap going forward. Yeah, that's that's unfortunate. The the dud on the SC uh, the SCV train there really really painful. Looks like we're gonna have a tank set up here in the main. He's gonna try and target down some probes over here uh, on the catwalk, and we will have storm to defend this. But four kills on these probes very annoying for Mini having to deal with this constant harassment from Royal and Royal is just building up and building up right now. He's not not got a huge supply, but he's ahead 20 supply right now over mini so mini even lower on that supply is gonna try and take this low ground i'm surprised that he wants to take this left base yeah yeah that doesn't really make sense we can hit this from the high ground with tank yeah it's a little bit crazy i guess he's thinking purely in terms of gas he just wants a gas advantage here to leverage against royal he's trying to hope on a game state where He's winning enough that he doesn't even mind that this is on uh, this, this this situation, but that's a really tough um, thing to ask for right now. He's using more and more probes to the Vulture Harass as well, so he can't even stabilize against the Vulture Harass at the moment, and yet he wants to also be safe against the high ground pressure against his expansion from the Catwalk. It's, a lot, it's a bit hopeful for Mini, but technically it is the most highest percentage of winning the game if he can just like maintain aggression and control the game state enough that he doesn't allow Royal to come up to this Catwalk to pressure his expansion, but that's it's a big ask. Well, I think the nightmare here might almost be over for Royal Royal. Almost losing this game, but now it seems like he's really solidified the game state. With so many t uh, turrets and mines all spread out throughout the middle, I don't think that Mini can break through anywhere. And if he does, it's going to cost him a lot. And uh, Royal is going to be able to bowl him over with his army once that attack fails. Yeah, Royal's got such a big bank now as well. So even though the, the supplies are not only like pretty Terran favored, only had by 15 supply is Mini right now. Not able to kill that dropship with that storm. Could have maybe got... He might get this. Okay, not able to quite get that uh, dropship there with the second follow-up storm, unfortunately for him as well. Not really anything going Mini's way. And now with this um, really poorly de decided to take... I don't think, Yeah, I agree. It's not, it's not a good decision to take this base here. He does get access to two gas, but it's just too easily attacked by the Terran player. He does want the extra 600 gas a minute rather than just the 300. But he looks like he does want to commit to this and defending this. Going to be sending down a little contingency of Zealots and Goons to pressure this tank off from hitting this expansion. Right now, Mini not even mining gas there anyway. So he's committing forces to defending something that's not providing him any value at the present moment. But he's hoping on the expected value of this later on. But right now, he's not really getting anything out of this. He's having to trade resources to maintain something that's not currently providing him anything. Yeah, it's, it's, it seems funny to me. Why not take the uh, the Nexus on the right-hand side here and just mine a little long distance from all the mineral patches and get that one gas going? You might as well, right? And you can't be hit. The Nexus can't be hit from the high ground in that case. Nice scan picking up on that uh, drop that was planned for the bottom left. And yeah, we're really going to be able to hold on everywhere. He's going to get some drops going here on the right-hand side just to harass Mini a little bit while getting prepared for this big push forward here in just another few moments. It's uh, likely that he's going to be able to push up onto that high ground in the center left and take that base here in, in just a little bit. Yeah, I'm really shocked that Mini didn't try and take the guaranteed 300 gas a minute by building the Nexus on the other side. It's actually what he needs right now. He needs a tiny bit more gas injection to keep going, and he doesn't quite have it. He got another um, few shuttles here making their way to the bomb left, but there's an EMP available in this science vessel to go down on the Templars. There's the EMPs on those Templars. Didn't quite get the connection on that first uh, Templar on that came out, but did manage to get the other one um, as it uh, was storming for the next shot. So great play here from Royal getting a two for three with the EMPs, and now going to be cleaning this up pretty cost efficiently without taking much damage. That was a lot of uh, that was a lot of kills on SCVs, but again, the Nexus here going down in the center right. This this is starting to dry up for uh, Mini. He's got not too much mining going on. He's got the mineral only. He's got this catwalk high ground base here, which is pretty healthy, but his supply keeps falling further and further behind. He's trying to deal with army here 
that's been brought forward to actually stop this island base from going up. And now he's moving over towards the center left. This is Royal's move out. This is the base that he needs to take. He just needs to take center left, and he should be able to grind this game out against Mini. Yeah, he... I, I would say that this is really difficult for Royal to lose from this position. It's still possible, but it's just so many tanks and so many vultures. Uh, I, I really struggle to see how many he's going to be able to deal with this. I don't think he, he's still not mining gas at three o'clock. I have no idea what's going through his brain right now, but he's struggling for gas and is still not mining any gas at this three o'clock base. Yeah, he should be taking that gas right away and start to mine that out. Um, yeah, I, I really have no explanation for that. That gas is out of range of any tank on the high ground, so it should be an easy choice here to grab that. However, he's gearing up to try and break this high ground. I, I think that this is just way too much for Royal. I, I think this is, this entire army is going to go splat if he tries to run it in there. Looks like he's going to go ahead and try to fight the Goliaths and actually get some really great mine drags onto the Goliaths. That was like seven Goliaths just got annihilated there by mines. Mini yeah, gonna there was lane, like, yeah. yeah, there was like carriers or arbiters. I would say it's even better, but uh, it's not too big a deal for Royal. He's got such a big army. It's, uh, the only thing that really has affected here is his ability to kill these shuttles. So Mini's going to try and get something done with that fact and come in here with these speed shells, see if he can cut, do some tactics to frustrate Royal. He's going to come down into the bottom left and maybe threaten a storm drop or a reel drop onto these big SUV trains. There is a, um, a tank here along with some vultures to try and clean this up. The EMP could come in clutch yet again, but one storm does go off. Not really able to connect with the SUVs, but it's going to help kill this tank at least. Yeah, having some trouble here actually throwing out storms on anything valuable. Kind of missing, whiffing a couple of times. Does get some vultures and tanks for his trouble, but now he's heading in over here towards this high ground trying to break this area and losing a lot of zealots to these mines now getting up here on this high ground pretty darn good he's gonna send down some storms great d matrix there to deal with that storm to prevent that storm from dealing massive damage another great storm here and another here on the high ground pretty well done by mini he does hold back royal for now but royal is just inevitably going to be able to take this base mini's starting to mine over there at the center right but again, still no gas there. It looks like he could target down the CC, though, over on the center left. If he gets that CC, that'll slow things down. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened over here? We completely missed this attack. Something happened over at that catwalk base that shut down the mining completely here for Mini. Yeah, and now he's actually struggling a little bit for minerals because he looks like he lost quite a few probes and is not mining that optimally at all right now. His main and natural have been mined up for quite some time. This base in the top left will also be mined out in short order as well. So right now, Mini looking a little bit starved and needs to put a lot of damage on with this storm drop now. Needs to kill as many as he was not quite able to get the kills he needs and losing that high tempo to the tank. Does try and come into the bottom left, but he's going to be shut down by that turret and not able to come in there. Now shut down dangerously on her HP. Not able to find the connection. He's going to try and unload at a distance and then run a Dragoon and make sure there's no mines and then maybe go into the, the, the High Templar. Oh, he's just not going to come into something. I don't know about this choice. Maybe like he should have just sent the High Templar out, but I guess he wasn't feeling confident enough. I guess the High Templar didn't have energy or something like that. Well, Mini, I mean, he just mined out over at the, the Mineral only, and he's going to be able to transfer a bunch of those workers over here to the Catwalk base. Ooh, getting a mine drag there at least, but Royal just has so much economy. He's got so much mineral income here right now on these bases, and he's just about to secure center and left. It's been a hard-fought battle for that base, but he will finally get that CC up and start to mine there. And with that, I mean, Mini, he needs, like, at least two bases to con compensate for that. Maybe he can try to take all the bases here on the island while Royal is committed super heavily to defending this high ground, but... I mean, that's a pretty big if, and Royal will be able to rotate and start to, to drop on that area and, and start to shut that uh, that island down, potentially. Ah, the storm not going off here. That one tank positioned perfectly to shut that down. And now yeah, Mini, he's, he's just running out of steam. He's going to go for one last big attack. Can he break the high ground here and prevent this base from going down? He's dropping some storms on top of a lot of this, but the Zealot number is just not there. The Dragoons are going to have to drop back and away from this fight had they committed all of them would have been completely splattered and i mean mini that was that was kind of the last hurrah there there's really nothing left for him it seems like mini's got his like file his nails filed down or something because there's just not much claws behind a lot of these attacks that he's attempting he's not quite getting the damage that he wants with these skirmishes and drop harass that he would usually be able to find and 
Now he's finally going to start setting up another Nexus in his, in his three o'clock position. Maybe he'll eventually take this gas. But he's missed out on so many thousands of gas from not mining this for so long. Now Rogan pressuring that base with two tanks while Mini's pushing on his catwalk lane. I'm going to try and take away a little bit of high ground control from Royal. Meanwhile, the ability to storm on the high ground may make it hard for the Terran player to trade it. Beautiful EMP coming down to that Archon, though. Going to be softening up this army just a little bit but these 2d matrix tanks are now going to work on this nexus and if you can deny mining in this three o'clock position mini's going to draw up even more in this game he's barely mining as it is so every he's everything he to just stay alive yet yeah, yeah, he's using more and more currently down to just 86 supplies he's going to tap out gg wow mini getting absolutely torn apart by just pretty much standard gameplay here well you know that was a crazy crazy early game and we're all getting the clapper there. Able to bring that into a very standard mid and late game with a big advantage. He almost managed to throw that game away. Kind of in the in the middle of the map there. Trying to do that one big push. And um, you know, trying to get across on that catwalk was a little bit disastrous. But in the end, his macro and advantage in the early game wins the day. Royal takes that game away and continues his streak here. Will he be able to get an all kill? The first all kill for the season for Terran. We're going to find out. He's got to take out Action or Jadong, which is coming up next. Well, I've never seen a Gasless Fast Expand go into a Nexus bust. Quite like what we saw in that last game. Royal pulling out some interesting tech there and making it work was quite the chaotic game but here we are in set number four now royal continuing his spree jadong is going to be his next victim here yeah he's got the donga in his sights right now crosshairs have been locked on the automatic targeting system of the Goliath is locked, it's able to harness onto that. And the only issue is, is that if it goes out of range, it kind of like does its own thing and like tries to shoot but doesn't shoot. So we're always going to be on top of things. Make sure he stays in range of the Donga here. And uh, he's going to be forwarding out an eight racks to the email of Jadong and see if he can get a reply. And uh, Jadong's not the kind of guy to really like, you know, read his DMs. He's a little bit busy these days and not a bit of a boomer as well at his current age and not really with it with the tech so probably not going to get the message until it's like right in his face it's looking like a 12 hatch here yeah we're gonna get some drones being morphed and it's so close man he could throw down an 11 pool no it's not going to be an 11 pool 12 hatch it is it's so this overlord is about to see this will he just like see it just in the nick of time here oh there he sees it he can build it oh he built a hatchery Okay, I thought he was going to like switch it up and build a, a spawning pool there, but he builds the hatchery. He's going to get the overlord over this wall. The marine shouldn't be able to kill it, and uh, yeah, we're going to have to see a drone defense here. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be building a little Mickey Mouse ears of supply depots behind that to float the wrecks and retreat to safety soon after applying the pressure. Not going to be getting the kill on this overlord due to the safety of that dead zone behind the natural with that high ground tile set, but still though, Jadon Gonna be fairly confident that he can hold this off. He has dealt with this countless times on the ladder. Just because he's gone 12 uh, hatch doesn't mean he's he's dead. Just by all means, he's gonna send out two drones in advance, deny the building of that that barrel just for a little bit until the marine can come down, escort, doing a bit of DPS on that bunker as well. So it's a little bit easier to kill if he does do the ling response, cut to 12 lings and try and kill these bunkers later on. Force a little bit of repair, but maybe out of roll. Gonna be trying to catch his marine though with these two drones. It might get it might be able to get it low enough here. Does they will also run away the other drone while getting enough hits on that marine. Take it down to 5 HP. Does lose the drone. He needs to be careful. He needs to kill this marine at all costs. And get on top of the other marine. Jalen needs to desperately kill this marine at all costs without losing this other drone. If he can help it. The bunker was finished. So Jaynong in a little bit of trouble if he loses any more drones. Because it will even out the game state. He doesn't want to lose uh, two or more drones here. Losing one's a little bit painful. But losing two doesn't let our world be very happy and comfortable going forward. Yeah, especially in the in this case, this specific case, when you are going for Ling here to follow this up, he's going to be building a whole bunch of Ling. You cannot be losing too many drones right now. He's even going to have to uh, build a sunken colony here. So 
The sunken colony, plus all of the links that have been built, really limits the amount of drones that you can produce. And he's actually going to run by here. Wow. Oh, this is kind of crazy. He's going to go all the way across the map. The sunken is not done, and it's going to lose 100 HP when it morphs. So look at this. The sunken actually going to go down. He targets the SCV at least. So the SCV does fall. That means that this bunker is going to be much, much weaker. I think he's just going to come from either side here blocking the additional marines from making their way over to these bunkers and he should be able to surround this and kill but this is a bit of a crazy hold i'm not sure who's going to come out on top after this yeah uh, i think uh royal is actually going to be a little bit behind after this because jadon did deal with this cost efficiently one thing that uh, royal did really well was positioning the bunker in such a way that it was um blocking the creep because if he'd build it slightly slower the creep would have spread one tile over and then jadon can outrange the bunker with the sunken without worrying about it um being able to target the sunken and still kill the hatchery so a little bit of uh, Jadon that he had to lose the sunken in that situation it's a little bit lost value but it doesn't really matter like he only committed one sunken to the defense made a lot of links the only issue is they can't really get too much value with these links if he can't break through his little marine wall here so he might try and target down or run by here but with the second SUV coming out the overall sees that he might not feel like he's confident enough to break this so might not go for a follow-up run by here unless he's gone for oh he's going for the bus okay he does want to bust here he's setting up he's just going to chill with these links and make it look like he's transitioning into a normal game and royal's going to get a little bit comfortable here and be like oh, okay you can't really do much here like you're going to try and bust me and i'm going to hold it and there's nothing coming so i'm fine but the real trick is that he's going to run by with these links and now the follow-up links are going to be the issue here because now he runs into the main base royal's going to respond to this there's going to be nothing in the natural to block the second oh, he's going to actually block the second run by so royal's actually ahead of the curve does identify the follow-up threat and he's going to send just four marines to the main base to deal with this. Now Jadon has been in a little bit of trouble here, but Royal does not get the good block on the second Ling attack like he needed to. So now Jadon has a follow-up pressure in the main base. Can pressure this supply to force the Marines off the line out of the protection of the SCVs and now could get a few Marine kills for his effort as well. Ooh, there's more and more and more Lings coming here. The follow-up from Jadon is just going to be a total, like, two hatch muta all in. So he has to get a little bit more damage here with his Lings and he's just not able to find it yet. Royal... Has a few SCVs here at the natural. He's blocking all of this. There's a little bit of a hole there. Maybe he can run by once again. No, Royal setting that up, making sure that he's not going to take any more damage there. Jadon running around inside the main. As long as he can delay, kill a few SCVs here and slow down the potential of any uh, eBay coming up, that might be enough to snowball the game here for him. But he's really got to slow this Terran player down a little bit. Make sure that he doesn't have all the turrets that he needs to hold off. Another kill on the SCV for Jadong. Every little kill is going to be a big, big uh, factor for Royal going forward. He's struggling to afford everything right now. And there has been a few Marine kills already with maybe another one or two going down to these links at some point if he makes a mistake. So Royal is in a little bit of trouble. He's going to use this one Marine because he made a mistake here. So this is what I was talking about. One tiny little mistake can cost you the game because he needs every Marine on hand, on deck right now. Turrets are only just now beginning to morph. And he also needs to make commsats. So he's really going to be hurting in his uh, economy right now. Not able to produce the kind of work as Meanwhile, Jadon also in a similar predicament, not having that many drones right now. So squeezing out what he can just before this Spire is on the way. He did do a lot of commitment to his attack. So his Spire timing is actually really slow. And then once that the scanner goes off and sees just how late these mirrors are morphing, Royal's going to breathe a sigh of relief as he realizes that his predicament's not quite as bad as maybe he would think. And he is going to be able to stabilize going to... He's been not to use these five bats, though. Beautiful round on those five bats. Nearly catches both of them. Not quite able to get them, though. And that's going to be a, another little win for Royal going forward. If he lost those two bats there, he was at risk of a follow-up ring run by, and that would have been costly. It might be a good idea for Jadon to come in here and try to actually snipe those bats, snipe those fire bats at the front, and then come in later with the lings to run into the main to pick off some more turrets. He's going to have to all in here. He has to go for the yeah. kill right now. Only four drones here mining at the natural. That's actually enough to eventually mine up to... Uh, you know, enough, some, some minerals to take a third base, but it's really, really tight with full-on mutilus production. It's going to be very, very hard. So he's going to just constantly produce mutas here and try to find a way in with these lings and mutas to actually break Royal. And Royal doesn't have that many turrets yet, but he's adding on a lot more here, realizing the game position. He knows exactly what he needs to do, and he's doing a great job of it. 
Yeah, he's only got six muters presently, so he's going to be focused purely on the bio count until a seventh muter becomes active, so we can then start to come in here and start one-shotting these SCVs that are trying to build turrets, trying to build infrastructure, and he's going to keep the pressure on Royal the entire time while eventually finding a, a win condition that he can utilize these lings and come in as well. Uh, right now, Jen is going to be rotating around to the national expansion. Uh, he can transition into a three-hatch all-in muter by with those extra minerals we were talking about. It's going to be a little tough for him to micro everything and slowly turn into a normal game, so instead he's probably going to just be non-stop muters while taking a third base. Right now he's banking up a lot of money though. He's just waiting for some overloss finishing. I don't think he's actually fully decided on committing to this uh, to actually all in muter yet. I think he's actually going to expand and actually not commit to it fully once he identifies that Royal has stabilized. He doesn't want to uh, risk losing the game straight up because he will be committed to basically three hatch all in muter if he decided to do that. Yeah, he sees the number of turrets here. He decides like, okay, you've defended well enough that maybe it'll be a better uh, option here to switch into another uh, base here try to draw this out a little bit he's gonna come in and slow down the factory at least not able to take out either of those turrets though okay both of them do blow up a little bit later on not quick enough on the repair there for royal but uh you know jadong opening up that position what can he actually do here now that his mutus has been softened up not much so he's gonna throw down a hydralis then Essentially, he's going to be transitioning into a normal game, except the den is a lot later than the relative curve that we're used to. So he will still have a big window of weakness here that he has to deal with, and he will deal with that in the form of the mutal link pressure out on the map, trying to slow down the ability for this three racks production to come out. And he's still going to be coming in and pressuring the turrets, forcing more of a response from Royal rather than a committal into an attack. He wants Royal to be worried about the mutas coming in while he's pushing, but Royal knows that he needs to threaten the counter attack. He can't let Jadon get away with this for free. He's just going to come out onto the map with his bio force and force the engagement from the mutas and threaten the sunken bus here because he knows there's no um, potential for Jadon to hold with the Lurkers for quite some time. So there's a big window of like two minutes where Royal can just come out onto the map and start to threaten Jadon and force Sunkens as a response position. Jadon can't afford to make Sunkens right now, so it's purely down to his mutilist control to try and be cost efficient enough in this game to try and find a normal macro curve here. Well, this is a great opportunity for Jadon. He's got those lings that he built a long time ago, still out here, ready to fight. If he can find enough marine kills, maybe he can put together a big enough force to actually crush this bio ball good job by royal to uh, quickly reinforce this because if you know he'd been continuing to move forward there he might have been easily crushed now with this kind of combined force of marine medic maybe he can um move out on the map a little bit more confidently here but i think the idea is still the same jadon gonna gear up for a big crushing attack here to try and overwhelm this uh, marine medic force as it moves forward he's keeping the a mutilist ball just behind the marines here making sure that he dogs any units that are coming out to assist that reinforcement path is being cut off here and he does get a couple of marines they're coming out of the natural there's the first valkyrie though and with that first valkyrie royal is going to start to really shove forward here we don't have any scourge yet this is going to be the big attack can jadon crush this or will he be shoved back completely looks like that first valkyrie shot Dealing a lot of damage to those first 11 meters. Yeah, the Valkyrie's providing valuable point defense to the Terran player right now. It's not really an attacking unit, more is it just a mobile defensive unit trying to shut down the end. Look at that beautiful connections on those muters as well. Jadon in a world of hurt right now, desperately trying to get his infrastructure online. He's got some lurkers making out on the map that hasn't quite made it to this third base location. Instead, he's going to have to defend from this high ground um, plateau here, but luckily he didn't kill, he didn't, have, he didn't have too many Marines left over to be able to kill those lurkers. So now Jadon might still be hanging on by, this, uh, by a threat of his head right now now he's got beautiful hair as well even though he's the age that he is he's still got a nice head of hair as jaynong meanwhile now transitioning into hive finally going to be moving his lurkers into a more safer position by this sunken colony at the third base much more defendable needs a third lurker there though one of them is also low hp so there's a little window the royal could still exploit this uh, in a few moments here and he's going to try and hunt down some of these overlords with these valkyries Jeez, you're talking about jaydon like he's an old man dude <laughs> he's like what he's like no not much older than us is he what is he 35 he can't be more than hey, 40. I think, eh? I think of him as my granddad. I don't know about you. <laughs> well, <laughs> Chaedong, at least holding on for now. That was some great uh, target firing there with the first couple of lurkers, you know, hitting the center clump of Marines and kind of shutting down that attack. If he had lost those two lurkers, he might have just lost the bottom uh, right base there, that expansion. 
could have been taken out and he would have been in a horrible position. But now with Royal just building Valkyries here, it's not looking nearly as bad, right? We've got Lurker to defend. We have Defiler Mound on, uh, finished up here. We're going to have Consume available pretty darn soon. And Royal really can't push in anywhere with just pure Valkyrie army. He's got to be really careful about moving around the map as well. Yeah, I'm curious what the follow-up is. Is he going to do like a transition into like three tank here? Like three, C three um, factory tank to try and get more cost efficiency against the Hydro Defiler later on? It's possible. Um, and, but he does want to just get this third base up and running, gets his extra 300 um, gas per minute. He needs like as much resources as he, as he can to fight a Zerg with this much gas. Jadong is sitting pretty right now. Jadong's not only got enough to survive, but he's got enough to, to thrive right now. The only issue for Jadong is securing this fourth gas, so Royal's going to be active out on the map with these bioforces, looking for opportunities to lay siege to the Zerg while also um, being able to deny this fourth gas going up. will keep him some control uh, over this game while Jadong sets up another Nidus now to kind of... Always be careful with these muters though, Jadong. Only has a little bit of map control available to him, and he's just losing it so cost costing efficiently right now. So Royal's going to feel even more comfortable sharking around the map, and won't be at as much risk of losing some Valkyries, losing some vessels randomly like he would usually. Yeah, he's being careful with these. He also checked the fourth base just to make sure that Jadong wasn't taking any, uh, you know, really greedy fourth over there at the bottom center. And Jadong, I mean. He's just lost most of his air defense in the main base. If I'm looking at that, and he just also throw down, uh, threw down a irradiate on one of these mutas. I think we might see some dropships pop out here in a second. Royal could try to take advantage of the lack of defense here in the main. Oh, absolutely, he should. And he's going to take a fourth base in the top right. I love this choice from Royal, both the timing of it and the location. He also was clever enough to reposition the barracks that was on the bottom right because it was glitching out the SCVs from transferring. He's not going to let anything slow down his timing. See, he's on top of everything. He's like a the Eye of Sauron surveying his own kingdom, making sure all of his orcs are working tirelessly right now and making sure he's crank, cranking out every possible unit that he can to try and get enough of a force available to lay siege to the Zerg and deal this very cost-efficient Hydra, Lurker, Ling, Defiler composition that Jadon's going to be fielding soon. We're adding on a lot of macro hatcheries here, and Jadon going to start to spread himself a little bit thin to try and take this fourth base. This is where things get very dangerous for our Zerg player as he's taking that fourth. There's a lot of different openings. There's a lot of different pathways uh, to get in and deal damage for the Terran. And it's like two links are going to be sent up to that top center. That's where Royal's trying to sneak a little base uh, over here and try to get a command center going up at that 12 o'clock. And it looks like Jadong might be able to deny that for a moment. Actually, we've got some Marines and Medics up there now. So that's going to be defended. But at least he knows about that. He knows that he has to get his fourth base online really quick. Because without that fourth gas, there's no way he can f fight a four gas uh, Terran player for long. Mm, he's just finished up his plus two. Oh, nice snipe on that Defiler from Royal there. He's just finished up plus two on his bio unit. So we'll have a little bit of window where he's much ahead, much more ahead than the Zerg player in grades, which is quite typical unless you're going for something like Crazy Zerg. So he's going to be able to keep trading efficiently. And he's got a nice healthy fleet of these vessels just coming out and irradiating everything in sight. If he can maintain that and avoid these vessels getting plagued and sniped cost efficiently by Jadon, he's going to give him enough of an army here to really start to put the pressure on him. We need to be careful not to lose these vessels with energy to scourge like this not quick with his reactions to grab those bio units to deny that vessel from being sniped and if he can keep whittling down the vessel count like this Jadon will be in a very strong position in this game he needs to be very careful does Royal at this stage in the game he has a nice healthy fleet of vessels if he loses that he's lost his hopes of controlling that great play there another great play oh wow oh but we've got restore look at that restore being used here I, I like love it. to see it Royal using that restoration to keep those uh, vessels at high HP, but it's not going to help too much with the Marines. The Marines are all going to be uh, dealt a lot of damage by that plague, and he could even get another plague here. We have a Defiler kind of walking out past the army. I'm not sure where that's headed. It just died in the middle of the map, so he's not going to be able to get that. Looks like this Defiler here could just consume and throw down a couple of Dark Swarms, but here's that opening I was talking about. Maybe he can get in here and deal that damage. No, lurkers are right next to the hatchery. 
going to be able to defend that location for now. But Royal is starting to really crank on that pressure. He's starting to push forward here, trying to irradiate all the defilers as they come out in order to uh, make it impossible to defend this location. Jadong doing his best right now, sending in a lot of lings to just die at the moment. And Royal sending up some more reinforcements. A lot of fire bats here. Maybe he can break through. He's going to give it a try right now. That's quite a lot of lurkers, though. The lurkers do not have a dark storm to help defend them. The fire bats are breaking through. All the lurkers are dead. A counterattack coming up here to the 12 o'clock, but this base here is essential. He has to save it. Here he comes. Jadon going to run up on top of this. He's going to drop a dark storm with the lurkers here. Maybe he can keep this alive. It's so close right now. Bailing out down towards the bottom. Wow. Six ultras going to come out here and defend this base. Here come the big boys, here come the cows, and there's no cattle bruisers to deal with these either. There's no real hope of him dealing with these cost efficient. He's trying to get behind the minerals to frustrate the pathing of the ultras, but the marines do die in short order. There is two Valkyries also on the 9 o'clock, also been trying to be dealt with by some mutualists. I'm not sure they're going to be too successful there, but Jadon with that counter attack, going to be shutting down the production of Royal just a little bit as he's transitioning into these four gas ultralisk um, play here. He's going for the big three factory siege tank that I thought he should have gone for a little bit earlier. It's it's a little bit delayed. I think jadon has got a big window here to just come in, pressure the fourth base, pull the army out of position, and allow these ultras to come in here in a big way and get on top of the infrastructure and army at the same time due to the fact these factors are so far out in the front line here, Sam. Ooh, great plague once again. Dark Swarm here over towards the natural. Uh, we're going to lose quite a few tanks right now. Tanks going down is a big, big deal in this game. The tank number is so important. You have to keep that number high high as possible and every time tanks get taken out it's kind of like protoss versus zerg or Pro protoss versus terran in this matchup eliminating tanks is going to give you a better and better position the higher that tank count gets the harder it's going to be for Jadong to win this but he's managed to kill a ton of scvs over here at the top left he's managed to kill a few of those tanks and royal is just falling apart not able to control the map not able to handle the multitasking of Jadong right now Exactly saying the, the value of those tanks grows exponentially in their account. The higher count you have of tanks, the more they can kill the units under Dark Swarm. They can't, the lurkers can't even burrow quick enough anymore, so there's not much of a threat to worry about. You just blast apart everything, even with the coverage of Dark Swarm. And once you reach that critical mass of tanks, it's really hard for Zerg to deal with. So he does need to keep those tank count low. And meanwhile, though, Royal has got a pretty fortified position with these three gases. So he has some life in the game. The issue is he's lost a lot already. And Jadong now in the driver's seat with such a supply advantage. There's a four drop ships going out. A little lot of drop ship going on here. Trying to do a big doom drop in the main base of Jadong to try and both keep him back. And offense is sometimes the best form of defense. And he's trying to utilize that here. And there's a few scourge waiting, but not a lot of lings though waiting. He's going to be clearing up all of these units. Scourge are also going to connect to two of the drops. Just beautiful hold from Jadong. GG going to be called from Royal and it's looking like finally the Terran lineup starting to be dealt with here okay best going to be sent out the final Protoss player here of the night Jadong here in the top left hand corner we're going to play on retro how do you like this map Shun I'm, I'm like becoming less and less of a fan of this map honestly in my own play but I, I still think it brings us some great games in KCM I kind of have the same mindset. I, I really do not like playing on it too much. Uh, you can do some fun plays in like Hydra Guardian, what have you. But yeah, generally speaking, it's not the funnest map to play on. Um, it's just too frustrating in the mid to late game phases with getting the control of these high grounds can be so difficult. It's kind of like fighting spirit in that regard. Not as bad in the balance, but sometimes the, the geometry and these big bridges can cause frustrations, especially to Zerg players and getting across them without like losing all your army to storm. It's like best going to be going for a, a Forge Fast expansion here. And uh, you know, have to see what their response is going to be from Jadon. I'm not sure if he's going to have 11 hatch or pull first, but it'll be interesting to see if he wants to over pull or try and be a little bit greedier with the 11 hatch. Yeah, per personally, I feel like for this map, the game plays out really, really similarly um, because of the, the, the shape of the map in PvZ. Uh, it's really common to have like almost the exact same setup in the mid game and the same exact problems. Uh, you know, going into the late game, there's not a lot of options for bases to take. There's not a lot of really high, uh, you know, value plays that can be made aside from, you know, storm drops, lurker drops, that type of thing. 
that can like swing the game out of like a normal state where you're just setting up huge right. lurker fields across these bridges and then on high grounds and they're setting up the uh, cannons and templar on their high grounds and it's, it just becomes kind of a kind of a mess but i don't know if we're even going to get there in this game we've got a pylon behind the 12 hatch here and we do not have an overlord to spot this so okay jadong actually does see it he sees the second probe actually and that's going to tip his tip him off he's relying on the drill method which you shouldn't do you should have a drone down here waiting because now he can block the pylon he can block this last remaining spot with a pylon while waiting for the yeah here we go oh, he can just build a cannon right away because he's the forge finishing time all right this is a little bit of a sticky situation jaden will have to rely on sunken here because he, his pull timing is so slow that he will not have length of time he's gonna try and hop these these pro these drones over if he gets two over he can kill the probe here but he's not getting the second drone over thus far it's a little bit tricky to do to rely on this to rely on this being a solution that does not always going to go your way he does also lose that drone to some of the worst case scenario so you have to rely purely on sunkens here to hold this it looks like maybe even two sunkens is going to be the response from jayon all right let's game this out a little bit because you can oh my god he's gonna lose the one drone that's so bad and he's blocked. blocking oh, he's no. blocking oh man he's blocking that's so annoying stopping this stopping the uh sunkens from coming up here let's game this out a little bit because the sunkens can hit the uh the pylon here at the front and you can kind of like glitch them out to make them hit the uh, cannons at the back. And if you do that, then best may be forced to target the uh, pylon in the front. And then you can kind of run in with the... Uh, yes, he's going to target that. And then he can kind of run in with the lings uh, once the pylon is dead. So he is going to target the pylon. He's going to kill his own pylon. And right as that happens, the lings are going to move in. The lings are going to move in right now. Go, 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 go. He needs to go in. Oh my gosh, he's really got to get in there. Oh, it's not really moving the uh, Ling's past. I think he can get on the right, on the top side of that cannon to actually finish that off. But he will get in there finally with the Ling's in the end, breaking down this cannon. Best, not really realizing his position there. I think he should have, instead of targeting down the pylon, just target down the hatchery and just kill that. 200 HP left on that. Pretty big mistake here for Best, I feel. I don't understand what we just saw there. I mean, I think the Simeon like mastermind forgot his hat today because he certainly <laughs> came here with all brawn. Yeah, the bowler hat was left at home, unfortunately, here. Best. I mean, you see the lings, right? It's pretty obvious that he's going to dive yeah. onto the cannon as soon as the pylon is dead. And yes, the Sunkins can target the pylon and kill the, the cannon. But if you just targeted this... Instead of just worrying about, you know, the, the Sunkins killing the cannons, if he had just killed the hatchery, he would have been in a fantastic position. Now he's in kind of a rough spot here with his Nexus coming up a, a, quite a bit later. It's not the worst position in the world, but he is definitely behind. Yeah, I mean, he keeps the hatchery alive, and he's got these two Sunkins, which will also help out later on. It does slightly glitch out the mining here. Small compensation for best that this one Sunken will be um, hindering the mining of Jadong ever so slightly, but... Looks like on our best, going to be trying to delay the hatchery placement of Jaden, forcing this drone away and out onto the map. Might even get the moving shot particle beam. Not going to be using manual move commands to catch up with the drone, though. So, not able to do so. Now, the Ling's going to come in to escort this drone back to safety to that 12 foot position to finally take that slightly delaying the expansion path of Jadon. Small little advantage here for best. And uh, it's going to have to just swallow the fact that he had a failed cannon rush and move on. Yeah, that was uh, a bit of a wild start, but we're getting into this game now, this PVZ, and we're going to see all of the tech here. Jadong has his third base on the way, is a little supply blocked right now, which is unfortunate, but you should be able to pop out some links here to deal with this little zealot attack now. Actually, quite supply blocked. It's been a while. He's been kind of sitting here at 26 of 26, 25 of 26 right now, still 26 of 26. And he's going to lose an Overlord as well. This can actually kill you as a Zerg player. You're supply blocked. You build an Overlord and an Overlord suddenly dies. You could end up being supply blocked for an insane amount of time. And not having the links right now, you can see he's only got three links here. He hasn't been able to produce for so long. I hope he's got more than one Overlord in production right now. Yeah, sending the Overlord into the main base is a double-edged sword. You do give yourself potential for in scouting information that's valuable. You also give an option for the Protoss player to just get a Dragoon, get value on killing the Overlord, and then have the Dragoon available to do a bust later on. And he's going to get the probe at 12 o'clock 
and, and keep this drone alive for the time being. Meanwhile, throwing a fourth macro hatchery down. But this hatchery is still taking a lot of damage, which will open up to punishment later on. Is going Spire currently. Jadong has the opportunity to make a few pairs of Scourge here, and then maybe consider an Ogre Zerg style, maybe going to second gas and 10 Mutalisk with 8 Scourge. Maybe put on some pressure in the main base. Force best to make Archons instead of High Templars for Storms, and hopefully can get some control of the game. Or he could even elect for a transition into full hatchery Hydra here, but I don't think he'll go for that. I think instead he's going to try and just to get a few um, Scourge out and try and build maybe up to five muters, deal with the Zealots out on the map and try and stabilize it. Yeah, he's just playing the game of stabilization here. There's really uh, no better way to put it. There's so much that's gone wrong so far with the overlords and the, the supply blocks that have happened here. It's going to be even more frustrating, you know, losing that overlord that just went down over in the main base. Now he's going to lose one in the natural as well. There's just a ton of annoying stuff coming out here from Best. And this, these are some of the worst games, man. These are some of the, the most annoying spots for uh, the Zerg player to deal with. Is When you start losing overlords and then you keep losing overlords and then you lose more overlords, it, it just kind of like spirals out of control. And finally, we're going to have a sunken here. To deal with this one zealot so he's not going to deal any more damage at least and he's going to get a six hatch but just stabilizing from uh from that early game has been an absolute pain in the butt here for jadon finally getting into his drone count yeah you're absolutely spot on with that astute observation saying like essentially it's a cascading effect where one mistake leads to another once you get supply blocked a little bit as uh, it just hurts you so much you're missing drone cycles your lava production is backing up so you're missing out on like any possible hopes of like getting a critical mass of units needed to deal with the Protoss in the mid game which is when they're at their strongest and they can just come out onto the map and just overrun you with the Zealot Temper Goon army compositions and if you don't have enough Hydras to deal with that critical mass you'll just get walked over and we could see that here in this game uh, with Jadong he's not quite in the curve that he wants he's not really established himself in the ebb and flow of this game it does give a lot of window for the gorilla here to break out of his cage and uh, you know, have a little riot at the zoo so he's going to come across the map here. Very small little attack. Going to force out some additional Hydras from Jadong. He has a lot of Sunkins. He's got quite a few Lings. But this is still a threat. And this is not really meant to kill. It's meant to pressure. And the uh, Corsairs are going to come in to try and pick off some Overlords while this is happening. Let's see what he damage he can do. He's going to go after the... A hatchery right now. Oh my god, the hatchery is quite low. Dropping that down, and he does pick it off. Dealing that damage, finishing that off. You can just see the cascading effects here. As that hatchery that was damaged earlier because of the Overlord supply block gets sniped here by that little strike force of Bess. And he doesn't even go in with the Corsair. He keeps the Corsair alive here so that he can deal that damage later. Sending those back home is pretty decent moves here for Best. And, and this is just so annoying. I, I, I'm, I'm like internally cringing here uh, as a Zerg player, man. This is so frustrating. And a DT might even slip in too. There's actually Overlords over at the Natural, but they need to go back. Where are they going? The Overlords are leaving the Natural. They need to get back over there to defend. He sees the, uh, D he sees the DT now, but this DT could actually walk right into the Natural here, and he has no idea. Okay, it's going to walk out, and it's actually going to walk right into the arms of the Mutas. So that's a bit of luck here for J Jadong, but that could have gotten way worse. That could have gone really, really bad. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good catch from him. He actually identified that the DT was more likely to try and run away in that situation. He intercepted by keeping the overlords on their trajectory and make sure he got the kill on that. Meanwhile, we see a lot of safety cannons from Best here. He's a little bit worried about an Ogre's uh, counterattack, worried about like 12 or so muters with a bunch of Scourge showing up in his main base and trying to end the game. So it's going to be denying Jadong that opportunity, but that also might give Jadong just what he needs to come back in this because those are th uh, three gateways that were not made essentially and worth of minerals. So that does slow down the army uh, potential of Best. So not going to have as strong of an army field as he would like to currently on six gateway production but besides the potential seven or eight here so we'll slow down best effort a little bit and he is going to be doing the big ogre zerk here look at this mutalisk and scourge force so maybe these cannons will come in handy for best after all and he'll get some much needed value out of this investment i don't think he's going to try and dive in here i think he sees the number of corsair i think he's just waiting um for when this big attack comes out from best and he's going to try and kill all the corsairs but 
Like, it's so hard. Oh, okay, he's going to try and dive on here. He's getting some good moving shot here. That's a lot of damage onto the Corsairs already. I think he wants to wait for the army of best to come out. He's going to have a lot of Hydras, but the problem with uh, fighting with Hydra is the Zealot's tank are so tanky. They take so much damage that uh, the Corsairs can just run through, kill every single Overlord, but they can't do that with this many uh, Corsair or this, this many Scourge on the map. With this amount of Scourge, you're really not going to be able to engage fully with the Corsair. Yeah, you're, you're right about that. You, but you, and Jadon probably doesn't have enough forces to commit now. He will just instead try to be screening the Corsairs from coming out onto the map with that fleet of Scourge or being reactionary rather than aggressive now. Does see this one Zealot coming out to scout for the potential fourth timing here. Yeah, interestingly enough, um, I think that Beth has invested so much into these Corsairs that he's actually kind of like hung himself a little bit in this game. Or rather, he's, he's, he's limited his, his, his opportunities to explode onto map. He said instead it looks like he wants to play really slow. I think Best actually might even be considering taking a fairly early fourth base in this game, the way he's playing thus far. He stayed on six gateways for a very long time. It's kind of interesting the way he's approaching this game. Um, I'm not so sure how I feel about that. Uh, what One thing I, I can say is that I feel like Jadong's in a very commanding position right now. So I feel like Best might be risking just losing the game straight up by how he's playing. And Jadong's going to go for that dive in the main base finally. Now that the cannons are undefended, he has so many Scourge to zone out the Corsairs if he can bait them. He's hoping really though for some High Templar snipes as they pop out the, the gateways. He's hoping the army comes back into the main base to defend while he comes into this third base location. We have some Lurker Ling. There is only one High Temple here of just a handful of Dragoons. So it's a small window, but Jadon can set up on the high ground and take over this position. But the, the Corsairs are here to try and scream. And here come the Scourge. Finding the connection. Still though, seven Corsairs are remaining in the fleet. So he's still going to hold the position for the time being. This is a bit wasteful for Jadong. I mean, throwing a bunch of lurkers up on that high ground, he was going for like the high value play here to, you know, get up there and deny the, the third base, but uh, he's thrown away quite a few lurkers and the follow-up push here from Bass could be pretty scary. I mean, he's still only on like six gateway, right? In the main, so it's not mm -hmm. that incredible, but uh, he's going to have to set up a really good position here. And this is the, the position that I'm, I was talking about earlier. It's like, Every single game, we end up seeing the same sort of position where the Zerg player has to creep colonies out to their little ramp there at the front. And then we're going to see, oh, we, we got a DT up here. It looks like I got a couple of kills, but not too much. Um, we're going to see the, the creep colonies slowly creep forward. We're going to have a bunch of lurkers there. We're going to have lurkers on the high ground at the top center. And we're going to have lurkers up here in the top right with Jadon going into a Nidus, into a hive and defiler play. And best trying to sneak bases down in the bottom left. And this is just how it plays out on retro. It's not going to be any different yep, this yep. game. Best just going to move up here and try to like cut off reinforcements to, to the top right for now. Yeah, plus two armor just kicked in for Protoss. It's now meta to go for armor after your weapons, making these zealots even tankier, like Saiyan was saying earlier. It's so meta right now, and it, you don't really mind about the lack of weapons because Zerg are just so slow in their carapace upgrades that you're not too worried about being behind the curves. Like Usually you're still ahead of the Zerg, and they're worried about getting their own weapon upgrades online. So it is very uh, min-maxy here to go for this fast two armor after weapons, and now he's got a much tankier army to weather the forces of Jadong as he could attack into this bridge area if he so choose. There is a, quite a heavy setup, so most likely we'll just be seeing Best Skirmish here, trying to get a good value out of his storms from afar and just try and whittle down the forces of Jadong. Meanwhile, taking this fourth base in the bottom left, I knew he would go for a fast fourth base here, and Jadong just wants to try and go into Hive, so Best is just going to skirmish him down as best he can. Oh, nice snipe there on the Observer. These uh, mutas still being useful here, at least for now. He could come in and snipe a couple of Templar as well. Uh, Temple are going to come forward looking for some storms, some good storms here. And as their storm energy is used up, like sniping these Templar is going to be very easy. He gets the Observer. He's going to get all the Templar here, I think, as well. The Dragoons are just not strong enough to kill all the Mutas before that can happen. And yeah, he gets rid of that. But you know what the big problem is? Is best taking bottom left right now. And that's not been scouted nor by the Mutas or by some Lings. I, I mean really missing the the tempo of the game here jadong if he'd known about that i guarantee you he would have sent mutas down to that bottom left to deal with it um but now, at this point i mean look at this best has an amazing setup down in the bottom left it's gonna be so hard to break that he's gonna start building reaver down there this is this is a nightmare actually for jadong this is this is like this is the worst case scenario for me in my games when i see something like this i just want to cry 
Yeah, I was just thinking as you were about to say that, that this is kind of the games you were talking about earlier, which make this map so frustrating to play on as a Zerg player that's not a professional game, a pro gamer. And he's losing all these Corsairs to the Scourge, every single Corsair in his fleet going down. Now this shuttle is hiding with its tail tucked between its legs, but suddenly he's going to grow a lot more confidence, a little bit of whiskey maybe, to give him the liquid courage that he needs to go forth. The mutants are coming back to try and defend, but they're distracted by this probe. They're not going to find the shuttle, and now four DTs or three DTs making their way into the main base now while Jadong's distracted as the attack comes into the natural bridge area. He's losing all his drones while Jadong's busy consuming and making sure he's dark swarming and able to plague. Now he's got these four DTs in his main base. Just absolute havoc right now we're going to target down the pool as well prevent more cracklings being produced by the zerg player meanwhile going to be able to catch this shuttle preventing an exit and will eventually shut down these dark tablets but not before taking pretty critical damage at end oh should this is this is a nightmare this is so terrible right now like right as jadong is getting you know fully online here with all of his drones his upgrades and everything uh coming out right now and he's starting to like think about busting out on the map and actually doing something with his army he's gonna lose uh a bunch of drones in the main he's gonna have to you know kind of reset this all up again uh get his main base online here and during that time best is just gonna set up a, an insane defense in the bottom left it's gonna be so painful to play this game right now as jadong here he comes he's actually coming out on the map pretty quickly after taking all this damage, he's managed to get his spawning pool back online. He's getting his drone numbers back up there, but the best has just bought himself so much time with that one DT drop. Yeah, Jadon's going to have to try and force some plays. Now, see if he can pick off some key units, maybe whittle down the tech units enough that he can... He's got a little tactical play going on now. Some links buying some time for some lurkers to splash down the Zealots HP enough that when this fight, this force comes in, that he can trade a, a cost effectively. But it's not really working out for him in the way that he'd hope. Instead, he's going to have to start relying on plagues. Plagues are going to be the aim of the game now to get the value out of these cracklings that he so desperately needs. Cracklings are pretty good on their own, but the only way you're going to get consistent value out of them is by relying on plagues. And here comes out of a storm drop in the top right nice drill but still losing a good five or so drones he is going to try and chase down that shuttle with those scourge but with the speed upgrade can be able to escape for the time being maybe even put some pressure on he's gonna run over a spore though he's gonna have to change the trajectory of that of that out yeah he's gonna barely survive with that shuttle and get out there and uh, right now best is playing pretty great now i'm saying but there is still a window where jaylon can get some plagues out onto his army maybe make some magic happen but he needs to keep establishing bases and trading cost efficiently it's extremely hard to do with the current map state oh beautiful plague though could be putting some chili sauce on those pros units making them a little bit more delicious to consume jeez i uh, i mean this is great play from jadong but the real problem here the bottom left hand corner it just cannot be dealt with right now and he's trying to take more bases in the top right after losing all these drones so he has to hit a big round uh, of drones to resaturate these positions um really holding a good position here in the middle of the map actually pushing forward right now means that he doesn't have to defend as strongly in some of these other locations like top right he doesn't need a huge amount of lurkers over there as long as he controls uh the bottom right like the the entrance to the natural of best is pretty good two shuttles making their way over towards this main base though best gonna put on even more hurt here to Jadong's economy and, and his main base. A bunch of zealots are going to be dropped out. He's got to go after that shuttle. Oh, I can't believe he's not chasing that shuttle. That's got Templar in it, I'm sure. He's going to go after the, the drone line here. We're flying by everything, actually, and running right over here towards the third. Here comes that storm. Big, big drone hill kit kills there. God damn, that's so much damage. And Jadong, although he is spreading out on the map, although he is taking a lot of map control, he keeps taking damage like this and best continues to hold that bottom left this game is just going to be miserable for him to hold on to crazy and you also see best getting shield upgrades as well he knows that this can go to super late game he's going to make sure he gets absolute maximum value out of his units as he starts to add some archons to the composition and also that shield upgrade going to be benefiting the majority of his forces as well beautiful plague though from jadong hopefully he can start trading cost efficiently but a lot of these eggs getting stormed so four of those high uh, four of those lurkers gonna have to cancel and uh meanwhile getting a pretty good surface area with these cracklings on those um units that are like been doused with chili sauce so a lot of them are 
not dying pretty quickly. He's going to catch this shuttle as well in the top right, forcing an unload. Going to try and storm, but a good catch from Jadon. Might still lose some drones. Does lose three or so drones there. Oh, might catch another two as well with the follow-up storm. Beautiful play from Best, really siphoning off the hopes of Jadon establishing an economy without too much pressure. And he's really just struggling to get his super late game online. He finally has reached the stage where he's almost maxed out. He's got 70 or so drones almost. He can start to really do anything he wants, but he's not quite at the optimal position he wants to be. He's lost so many drones to these storm drops that he can't really just max out and go anymore. He has to be really tentative about how he utilizes his army because any tiny bleed is going to be deadly for him because he needs, he needs to deal with the cost efficiency of best. These Reavers, these Templars, and these really turtled positions are going to be so costly to break that Jado may not even decide to break them. He might just try and control the game state as is, secure three and nine, and try and defend and play a super late game here. Yeah, watch for best here pretty soon. He's going to be dropping like four Reavers on that high ground at center left and just taking that base away with a bunch of cannons. It's going to be really hard for Jadong, but look at that crazy plague. These crazy. plagues might actually win the game for Jadong, just straight up, guys. These plagues are insane. Crazy. He's got so much value out of these that despite all the damage that's gone on and, you know, best just having such a great position down in the bottom left, he might actually get such good value that he's able to, uh, you know, play it out in the late game and, and just overtake best here. Look at that. Pylon. Watch for like 10 cannons to suddenly pop up and a couple of reavers to be dropped there. And that base is going to be completely secure. It's going to be really hard for Jadong to take that away. Pretty much every single unit, save maybe half of a control group, has been plagued out in the field right now. This army is nowhere near as potent as it looks. It's kind of almost like a hallucinated army. It's nowhere near as strong as it appears. He's going to be coming in and sniping one of these High Templars for the cost of some muters, though, going down to the Sionic Shockwave of those Archons. Now, if he can come up here and stop this base from going along, Jaden will be in a great spot. The problem is he only just now identified it. The cannons are warping in. He will not be able to get over here and deal with this cost efficiently more. Some Templars also transferring up. He has still got control of the unit flow over there due to the positioning of Best Army. So Jadong going to have to sacrifice that due to the lane control of Best and instead going to try and provide compensation in the means of these plagues just being chained over and over again. This time, though, plaguing units are already plagued. Kind of a bit of redundant value here. And another storm drop in the top right going to take out a few drones and then maybe get some more further damage in the top right as the shuttle rotates. A big, healthy counter drones up here with a good position. Storm might get some. I'm not quite able to on that. Diagonal. Just catch it. Oh. oh, that's a beautiful storm right there. Money storm from best. That's what we were looking for. He's also going to unload the last two tempers. I think one of them has the chance of storming again, but it's dealt with at 74 energy. Pretty could hold from Jaden, but he's taken so many losses in this game. I feel like he can no longer really challenge Best, and that means that Best is going to secure this 9 o'clock, turtle up, and eventually take the game, I think, because he's got enough gases now that the Zerg can struggle. Jadong's going to go for a gambit here. He's getting tired of this. He's going to try and break the natural. He's going to try and get into the main here, but there are so many storms. This is so frustrating. Look at how many storms are available for Best right now with the number of gases he has online. It's just infinite storms, infinite Templar. There's going to be insane numbers of Archons popping out here, plus the Reavers easily brought down to defend, cutting off the reinforcements here in the middle of the map. This is just about it for Jadong. I think he's not going to be able to get down here. He's not going to be able to break. I mean, this game will go on for quite some time, but really, Jadong needs to make a move because the map splitting in half is just not a favorable position for the Zerg. Yeah, the only conversation he's getting from that game state is these minerals in the center. The Zerg does not need minerals. The Zerg needs gas right now. Sure, it'll help him produce some cracklings to keep going. Beautiful storm on those clump of lurkers, though. You don't want to bury your lurkers in a big, massive clump like that. Five of those lurkers were being stormed at once. There's insane value. Even just softening them up to half is a, a great effort for Best there. Now, a big flood of links finally coming in to try and crack open this vision. There's two Reavers, some DTs, a few Zealots, a few, a couple of storms. He has enough units to break this. He's controlling his units perfectly beautiful surface area denial of these cells buying some time for the scarabs to find their connections there are some cannons but a lot of them are deep so he's struggling to get the value that he needs out of these cannons they're not quite helping the reavers at the front so he's going to shuffle back into the main base area to try and defend from the high ground making tons of dark templars a few zealots to tank and a lot of high templars now to bank up some energy hopefully get enough storm he needs to wait 10 or 20 seconds from the amulet upgrade to help get the the, the high templars all the way up to 75 energy you do gain an extra 12 energy 
Went without how many upgrades. So they are spawning of 62 energy. So it's just a few seconds to get their first storm. So they can storm from the high ground and quickly morph into Archons and provide more value. So right now, though, beautiful skirmishing in the center of the map. Jadon going to be clearing up some high Templars that were trying to intercept the, the incoming um, reinforcements from Jadon to deny Jadon coming down to his pocket. But right now, Jadon still has a chance to come in and, and put pressure on. There's still, there's still not that many high Templars that maybe something could be done here with some storm dodging his own. Yeah, he's, he's got to break this. He has to do this right now. That Reaver being juggled in and out of the shuttle throughout this fight is insane. It's dealt so much damage. It's killed so many units. It's absolutely ridiculous. He's going to run up just right-clicking down that Reaver. Can he get it? No, of course not. Ling's just hitting that forever, but not managing to take it down. And here comes the Hydra just trying to push up this ramp. It's not going to happen. He does pick off the one Robo there. But this is this is just it's so rough, man. It's so tough to get up here. He's rallying everything to this natural. He has to break this and best best is just making it so cost inefficient to get up this ramp. It's insane. Absolute craziness. And look at how much money he has banked up right now. He's got so much money. Maybe a drop over here. Do we have some lurkers? Potentially Jadong. While all this craziness is going on, does he have the multitasking to actually get a drop over here and kill some probes? I mean, does it really even matter? Best has so many probes on the map. He can easily transfer some once he's cleared that, cleared that up. But, oh my god, this is craziness. He's going to try and break this center left now, trying to split the attention here of Best. But he sees what's on the high ground. And he just has to back away. There's no chance of getting up here with Reaver, Templar, and all of these cannons here. Even with the Dark Swarm, it's not just it's just not gonna happen, man. You're gonna have to stagger things so far out. One lurker at a time works great against storms, but the Reavers are gonna rip that apart. Yeah, there's a DT underneath the swarms just until a moment ago. That was doing cleanup on R5 for the straggling links that were trying to focus down the cannons. Still is Jadong trying to push into this formation. It's a beautiful plague on the Reavers and cannons that are going to soften this up. But he's lost so many units, cost inefficiently in dealing. It's finally going to be taking the center of the map to get a little bit of an influx of minerals. He hasn't yet taken the gas at 3 o'clock, so he has got that available to him for some time. But now that Best has more or less got a strong foothold on this 9 o'clock, he's going to have eventually have enough gas to deal with the zerg and just sit back and storm until the game state reaches its climax where jadon's no longer able to field any more units and he can't ever engage the protoss anymore because he'd just be bleeding off too much inefficiently so jadon's pretty much up against the wall right now he has to make uh, some kind of gambit to catch best off guard but the Gambit was probably dropping the 9 o'clock like he said earlier, but he's not going to get it. Instead, he's going to go to the natural expansion where there's so many cannons and reavers down. And usually, this is the most least defended position of the Protoss, which was Jaden was hoping for, but it's way more defended than he anticipated. Just going to be getting a plague off on those reavers for compensation instead. What is the game? What is the game plan here? What can we do? Jadon, he's going to struggle to defend center right right now. He's trying to attack into a base that has no meaning at all. This is a completely useless base here. Uh, down at the bottom center really no reason to even try to break this right now but he's gonna go ahead and take this out anyway with the uh you know ling and uh, defiler army you can kill that pretty much for free but best is starting to move out on the map once again he could contest center he could contest center right uh, i mean this is this is looking bad for jadong man he's he just doesn't have the defensive setup here to contend with all of these attacks that could be coming out. That's a lot of Templar. I think Best actually making a mistake here by not making more Archon, but he is going to drive everything back. Maybe that'll buy enough time to make a bunch of Archons here and, you know, make this like Giga army that just can't be killed. Well, killing that base at six does a nice 75 gas a minute from the depleted gas income, so it does slightly hinder best from making a templar every two minutes it's, it's a little bit of something it's not quite what he wants but look at these beautiful storms killing majority of these 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 forces of jadong so efficiently he's bleeding him dry he's definitely trying to mine the center of the map to get the minerals that he needs to keep these aggression going. there is a window where he can still come in there and overrun the protoss player but it's very inefficient he can't trade at 50 percent efficiency rating usually instead he's just going to be trading at like 35 to 45 percent and just hope for the best even overrun the protoss before his production cycles can kick in and reinforcements God. arrive so many templars though like you say it's just almost pure templar you almost need some units to support the temple it's kind of crazy yeah this is this is so bad when the protoss gets this much economy online when they get this many gases it just becomes insane to even think about dealing with this number of templar like what do you need what's the composition that you need 
Hydras are going to get stormed. Lings are going to get stormed. Lurkers are going to get... Like, everything is just going to get absolutely destroyed by that T spell. It is just 75 all around, man. Best not going to let up until Jadong has to leave this game because he just runs out of money. Yeah, now these Reavers going to be targeted down by these Hydras as well. They were on red HP already, so very quick uh, uh, work for the Hydras to make. Uh, they basically do true damage to those shields due to the damage type. Usually they cut through the armor a little bit slower, but due to the fact that there was no HP on that Reaver, they pop so quickly. And now we see Best making his way into three o'clock position here. Only a couple of Lurkers are going to be able to overrun that quite efficiently and then hold the ramp with some good Storms and Zealots and Harkons on a low ground. GG finally called from Lee J Dong as another Zerg bites the dust right now. Terran still have two players left alive, but right now we've got a different guy in the driver's seat. It's the man himself, the gorilla, the great ape, best. Okay, Sharp versus Best on Radeon should be a great game here. Really looking forward to see Sharp's take on how to correctly approach this behemoth, this monstrous gorilla of a player, and on... This map as well. I really love Radeon. What do you think about this map, Shin? Push the talk, Shin. I think it's a great map, and we've also got um, it, even more AMD themed than usual. Usually these maps are sponsored by AMD, hence the logo in the center. But this time called Radeon, like the product line of the GPUs. So interesting that we've got even more of a themed map here. Kind of getting a little bit more representation for AMD in StarCraft. And I'm all about it. Circuit Breakers, interesting map. 14 bases, kind of in between the 12 and 16 we're used to in the standard map making. So it does kind of add an interesting dynamic in just how many bases there are. And you've now no longer got a, a 9 o'clock base and a 3 o'clock base. Instead, now replaced with this dead space area, which can be interesting for recalls or uh, dropship play, what have you. And with these high ground 12 and 6 o'clock does allow for a contentious mid-game to dividing the map up and with the expansions being kind of symmetrical here both leading close to each other does allow for some very aggressive and um, harassment style gameplay here Sam. specifically in this matchup as well you have to take into account the fact that the naturals are pointing towards each other drop play is so much stronger here in addition it's very hard to split the map uh, vertically which would be the uh, the play here from our Terran player from Sharp, if, you know, we got into that really late game scenario, it's very hard uh, to split this map. It's so wide there in the middle. So yeah, this 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 could be tough as a Terran player, but uh, there's also the uh, pretty easy to take and hold third base. It's not that far to move out. There's a lot of buildable terrain. You can throw down a ton of turrets and kind of slowly creep out with tanks on high ground, kind of defending your flank to, to hold... Uh, that line and then uh, eventually take that third it is kind of far from the natural but it's far in that it kind of uh, wraps around the main base which is honestly pretty decent for the Terran it helps you to set up those big defenses to avoid you know arbiter recalls and stuff into the main later on absolutely same we mean while we see best going for that range into expand play 21 nexus basically He's going to try and get some Dragoons out. Maybe he can come here and pressure Sharp, at least force out. Maybe a little bit of a repair build, but since there's no Bunker expand, there's not even going to be a Bunker at the moment. Just going to be going straight up to Thor Marines. Not even going to Vulture first, though. Just straight into Machine Shop and get that tank online. Then he can come out, maybe delay this Bunker because he's putting so much damage out onto this Dragoon. It's also going to be hard for Best to come in here and confirm whether or not there's a CC. He doesn't know anything right now, so he needs to kill some of these Marines and try and sneak in and see what's what. He doesn't even know if there's a CC or not. And it uh, looks like Sharp's going to be doing something a little bit sneaky sneak here, maybe. Yeah, this is uh, a shock, really. And Bess has got to be confused here. Why is there no Vulture? What is the plan coming up, Sharp? I mean, maybe a Vulture with speed to try to run around or something? Maybe some mines? I'm not sure, though. I doubt it's going to be... Well, there's a tank, but I doubt it's going to be Siege mode um, immediately here. But it was a two... Dragoons, they do see no CC yet. And at best, I probably throw down a second gateway here if I'm in his situation, and I think that's what we're going to see. Yeah, we might be looking at that. But meanwhile, though, he's pushing right out onto the map with a push attack, and he's going to probably have mines behind this as well. Was that Vulture Speed maybe that finished up? That was interesting. If that was Vulture Speed, 
maybe wants to try and get a run by with this vulture and get a condition where the pros is then forced to defend inside the main base and the natural at the same time and really frustrate the game state for better this one gateway worth of production going to be pulling a lot of probes off the line now to try and help deal with this small force from sharp here two mines being laid to shoulder shift hold position to try and get them laid faster and get going but vulture taken down in quick order phase disruptor shots from the dragoon taking short work of those and these marines now but two dragoons might be falling in shorter not quite able to target them now quick enough but we'll be getting three of these dragoons here but gets the tank with the pros doing beautiful body blocking on those beautiful hold from best here to avoid disaster but did take quite some damage to those probes and lost a couple of dreams there bad targeting there from sharp unfortunately not targeting the dragoons with his tank several times he just took shots onto the probes rather than the dragoons and he could have cleared all of that uh he could have cleared all of the uh dragoons and probably gotten all the probes as well but uh with the missed shots there unfortunate ending to this attack and Although quite a few probes went down, Sharp still losing a tank, you know, getting halted in this push. It's not what he was, the value that he was looking for. And with this natural base coming online, uh, he's going to have to defend carefully here to make sure that he doesn't fall uh, any farther behind. Yeah, meanwhile, that's just going to be throwing down a pile of wall and it's natural. He probably wants to think about going, yeah, two, two, I would say two gate robs, robs into um, third base here would be ideal for best. He's probably um, feeling slightly comfortable in doing that, especially after killing that tank early on. So slowing down potential timings from Sharp. And we didn't see the best of control from Sharp this game. He's certainly not in the game state that he would like to be in. Still playable. He's still actually doing pretty good in supply, even with the Protoss player, which is indicative of the Terran player doing quite well. We now see best coming onto the map to Minesweep. And uh, I think that's overall, I would still favor Sharp in the game going forward. I just would have liked to see a better game state out of this. Oh, he might get run by with these vultures. This is typical Sharp here, having the vultures out on the map, ready for this run by opportunity. He does not have siege mode, though. He could end up taking a lot of damage here as the dragons slowly push forward with no bunker as being so greedy as Sharp. Finally going to sneak in, though. Oh, my God. He's microing too hard on this side of the map. Best going to lose so many probes here. He's just got to get into that mineral line, deal as much damage as he can with these two vultures while all this attacking is going on. The bunker is still not done. Sharp could just die because of this bunker not being completed. He finally does get inside the bunker with one Marine in there, though. That's not a lot of DPS. And looks like all of the dragons will eventually fall. He is running up this. I'm not sure how much health is left on these dragons. There's actually a lot more than I thought and he is going to get up here missing a lot of shots but finally does clear out that last tank so much damage we don't know how much damage has been done to the probe line here of best looks like it has been cleared up finally quite a few probes did go down there but i think this is better for best overall yeah the roughly 12 damage per second of that marine in that bunker not really a threat to the protoss player the shields being more than enough to buffer against the incoming damage he can still come in here and pressure sharp right now there's only a few mines delaying his effort yes this observer here the scout does lose one of those dragoons while trying to dive in to get that tank the tank only on 55 hp just a few shots will finish it off so he's repairing that up right now wisely and he's going to be able to stabilize here against best while he's taking his third base a little bit off curve so so far sharp looking really healthy in this game both economically and in this game state uh, I was thinking that Sharp was going to be in a much worse position. Just imagine if he had that bunker for the safety uh, in, in that push. How much better off he would be here uh, in that case. But really skimping hard uh, in that game state. Keeping the bunker unbuilt for so long. Just putting it down at the last possible second. Ends up taking quite a bit of damage, but overall, Best lost a lot of probes back at home. We really didn't get a full view of that. Mostly, we were watching this fight here, but it seems like the uh, main base looking a little skimpy on the number of probes we've got here. Yeah, um, he's only one machine shot for Sharp, so he's he, he's able to squeeze up just one tank at a time. It's really optimal right now for Terra not to have to overproduce tanks if you can help it. So the fact that means he can also make more vultures. So as we know, Sharp himself, very good vulture user, is going to enable him to come out on the map with so many more vultures that Best is going to be the one reacting, which will allow Sharp to come out onto the map in a big way and pressure the economy of Best. Meanwhile, Best not able to come into the main base. There is a turret and a Goliath here just waiting to try and shut that down tonight. Fourth factory on the way as well, which will enable Sharp the kind of production that he needs to finally think about some attack timings as well.
You think this is for an attack timing, or are we going to see a third base coming up here soon? Oh, another run by here into the natural. He's going to get so many more probes. Not quite perfect on the defense there is best, and Sharp just going to clear up a bunch more economy here for the Sparta players. Transferring the probes over towards the third, dropping the Reaver here to try and defend, but the Vultures will just transfer up here towards this third base. He's getting so much damage. Really good finesse play here from Sharp. Able to get way more value than those uh, Vultures would regularly get. Sharp playing extremely on brown brand right now. Very crisp, sharp precision. And uh, he's like a chef. He's like I think of him kind of like a Terran chef snipe. He's able to just cut through him like Mr. Jinsu over here. And uh, I don't know, man. Like sometimes I, I worry that like even if you get ahead against someone like Sharp, he's got enough like tactics and like um, little funky ways of playing that people aren't quite used to. That you can really get the better of some of these really strong pros players. And I think that's why we see him in this Terran lineup here. Which is what we were talking about last week. We were surprised to see a uh, Terran versus pro specialist not in the lineup. Now we see him to his full effect, and we can see why. We were thinking that he would be such a good choice, huh, Sam? Yeah, I think so. And he's dealt with the craziness of this early game so well. And best, you know, you're saying that uh, even if you're ahead um, as a Protoss player or against someone like Sharp, it can be hard. But uh, the, the reason that it's, uh, it's tough is because the vultures are always getting in and if he really gets far ahead he could start throwing down cannons everywhere but right now you can see no cannons anywhere for that defense so there's going to be a lot of openings for sharp that he could actually sneak in and actually get some kills on these probes and that's the perfect game state for sharp to be in looking for those probe kills always is he coming forward here he's going to look for the snipe on that shuttle but Great play by Best, just walking back the Reavers rather than trying to pick them up and, uh, you know, potentially getting taken out by that Goliath. We have the magic number of Goliaths here for enough to two-shot those shuttles and also deal with these observers very quickly. Sharp now making his way to the center, but he does have a good vision of the army of Best, so he knows exactly how much ground he can gain for free. Sieges up and doesn't go an inch further. Now he's going to unseize and gain a little bit more ground. Every inch that Best gives him, he's going to take right now and try and put the pressure on Best and force him into a frontal engagement. Best needs to pull back right now. He's already taken a big volley on this shuttle as well. It's just now one shot from these four Goliaths. He needs to be exceptionally careful. He doesn't extend himself. Takes another Karen boosted missile upgrade. It um, Hellfire missile shot onto that shuttle as well. Taking it down to 39 HP. He needs to be very careful now. He's going to be cut off from his retreat, and the reinforcing army will also be dealt with if he's not careful. So he's barely holding on some kind of position here as Sharp is just dominating the game state right now and moving out to natural expansion rally point where he's hoping to strangle best out of this game, isn't it? Yeah, this is uh, this is nasty right now. Best losing so many dragoons to the south. I I, I think that might actually be uh, the killing blow right there. Losing all of those dragoons for basically nothing. Not even able to clear out all the mines. He's got a ton of zealots popping out here, but it's the combination of the zealots and the dragoons that will actually clear this army. And look at how much is coming forward here for Sharp. Holy crap, he's gotten so far ahead now in this game. A full 30 supply ahead now. This is crazy as he comes forward here. Fighting against Zealots without speed. The, 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 the vultures here in the front just eating them alive. And the tanks are all still alive. Sharp steals no this game away. Wow. No GG here from Best. He is sad about that result, man. <laughs> crazy, crazy good plays from Sharp here. Dude. Dude. Sharp, dude, is such a god right now. I love this guy for ASL this season. Actually, I think what happened when they played that game on top versus bottom and best forgot that um, about all chat. So maybe we didn't see that because of uh, all chat reasons. Possibly. Uh, yeah. Possibly, yeah. Um, all chat maybe not being uh, enabled there. Um, not sure. That definitely happens a lot uh, in just regular custom games. I'm not sure if that's what happened here, but... Dude, I mean, that that was a crazy, crazy attack that Best did into the natural without even having a bunker. Somehow Sharp holds it onto it and slips zealots or slips vultures into the main base. Yeah. Really, really that good. Crazy. Yeah, really crazy game. I wish we had picture and picture here for KCM as well, so we could have seen exactly how much damage was done there. But I think it was a lot because Best was just really lagging behind for the rest of the game there. 
it's crazy how Sharp can do these like small little vulture skirmishes to get himself either out of a deficit or just race ahead or, or, and solidify his lead even more. He's, he's just like one of the best people at it. Absolutely. Well, we're going to jump into this next game here. Protoss has been eliminated. They are out. And only action remains for the Zerg squad. So we're going to jump into Sharp versus Action. It's coming right up. Action versus Sharp here with Action in the top left-hand corner. Sharp in the bottom left on Polypoid. A great map to have potentially our final game of the night. Sharp here looking to end this series. And we've already got kind of a groundbreaking week here of KCM with the first ever week in Season 8. Or Season... <laughs> season 1 of 2024. We haven't had Protoss go out first until now. This is their first loss here in the KCM this season. Yeah, finally the great apes have been slain. This is no longer a Planet of the Apes type situation. The humans have regained control for the time being. Sharp leading the charge for the Terran race right now, representing uh, both yours truly and Saiyan and everyone else here that's listening to this plus a few potential non-sentient life forms. Who knows, maybe, you know, all kinds of like things over to tune into the stream. I'm not even aware of it. Maybe there's like some plants that are big fans of the show here. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Sharp here. Gonna set up a wall at the front. Action seeing everything. You got that nice first scout. It always feels so good as a Zerg player when you get your overlord over the natural immediately you know everything that's coming here you can watch if the barracks is blinking you don't need to send out a drone to scout or anything like that actually going to be feeling very nice here with his gas and pool already operational and that 12 hatch here at the front he's going to be doing just fine here with one marine coming across the map though and the bunker being started here this may be a little bit of a problem for action. Is he going to pull a huge amount of drone or is he just going to wait for Ling to pop? I think he's going to wait for Ling's and he's also probably going to do a two hatch all in the Muto with that two minute 50 layer timing as well as exceptionally fast layer timing. He wants a real big window to abuse Sharp here. Sharp's the kind of guy that likes to abuse his own timings and exploit the small transitionary windows available to, to be abused that Zerg so typically have to fend with at these high levels that their unit control just isn't as effective anymore because the Terrans are aware of the game state too much to be continually abused. Now he comes links with the drone support, gets the surround on the bunker, can be able to deal with that quite cost efficiently. The SCB not even going to try and repair that to make that uh, a more efficient trade. Instead, just going to be sacrificing and wasting any minerals is sharp. He needs every mineral that he can to not die to this follow up to actually be mute or limit. Ooh, sending a Marine across the map. You do want to send that back for sure. Can't be losing that right now. It's uh, critical for the defense against these Lings and also the Mutalist follow-up. He did manage to get the SCV into the main to just confirm the Spire is coming. And you should know here that that Mutalist pressure is incoming. So hopefully he's going to build enough uh, turrets here to just keep himself safe. Go ahead and loses that one SCV as a Ling run by actually over here and towards the natural. Uh-oh, this is getting really bad now. Uh, Sharp letting those in. I don't know how that happened. We didn't catch it on screen, but he really should have had an SCV in his wall with the two Marines behind that. And not having that means he could be in a lot of trouble here. Drones actually being sent across the map. Action getting a little bit uh, trigger happy here. Even a drone out in the middle, that's a bit of a problem for action. He really needs to get that drone back to work. But more Lings running in here. More Marines going down. He targets the refinery by accident. That is a really rough play there from Sharp. You know, A-clicking sometimes uh, that, you know, that actually often happens to me as well. You're just A-clicking like very, very rapidly. Accidentally click one of your own buildings or something like that. Real pain in the butt here for Sharp and... He's finally managed to kind of stabilize, but it's still going to be a really rough hold uh, hanging on against this uh, follow-up Mutalisk attack. 
Yeah, the Mulisks are already in production. The Spire has already popped. It's going to be a lot of pressure on our Terran player. Sharp here. Bunker going down on that Supply Depot wall. This Bunker is not only good at uh, just holding the line right now, but it's going to come in critical when he needs to both defend the turrets and the natural expansion while inside the main base against the Muters. So he needs this Bunker to hold the natural expansion from any Ling run by just come in here and snipe the turrets for free. So actually going to be going up to a third hatchery as well has the option to transition to a normal game or we'll go up to three hatch all in mute here and really put the pressure on this is nice by sharp i mean keeping the scv there to just delay the mutus by a tiny bit is nice and now he's going to get a lot of turrets up uh, he's cutting a lot of production here to make sure that the turrets can come out in time and he hasn't floated the barracks into the main base yeah that's a, that's a great opportunity to do that right now but he's just keeping the barracks here uh, for the wall for now, making sure that, you know, he's kind of safe in the natural. He's already got the bunker up there, which is uh, a nice safety um, tool as well. Uh, Sharp just building a ton of turrets, even bringing SEVs to start repairing before the Mutilus even start to attack. Really, really nice play by Sharp. He's not letting any holes in his game open up here for Action to start to take advantage of. And Action realizing that he's pretty well locked down is just going to start popping drones with that third base coming online here in in just a moment. This is actually a bit of an issue for Sharp. He hasn't got any scanners available to him right now to actually identify exactly what's being produced by action. As far as he's concerned, this is just pure Mirlisk production. He needs to constantly make turrets. So he needs to kind of gauge exactly how many muters there are and at what time to try and get a feel for just how many drones were made behind this. He hasn't made any more turrets at the natural expansion right now. So it makes me think that maybe he's... It's kind of getting the right idea now that, okay, this isn't total meter production right now. I'm going to kind of be kind of safe. So I'm not going to make too many turrets here and not waste too much money. Yeah, he's not being too crazy aggressive with the mutas. And, well, this is a bit of a problem here. He didn't want to lift off that barracks earlier. So now he has to float it. And that's going to give the opportunity for action to bounce glaives off of that. It didn't lose any marines because of it. But you can absolutely start to, to eat uh, glaives and lose marines if you're not careful. Uh, with a building floating like that in the front and he does manage to land it's on fire but it's not burning down or anything so he should be fine here action adding a lot of drones and getting into his transition as well so i, I like this play from action you know he's really identified that sharp is taking him super seriously with the number of mutilus he's produced he's not bleeding mutilus at all he's just taking damage or dealing damage when he can where he can without losing any of these mutas and now he's found himself in a pretty decent spot with his hive here on the way at eight minutes he's got the queen's nest he's got the lurker upgrade coming and sharp actually needs to get out on the map now yeah with the timing of that hive not going to be able to uh, probably do a tank push here but just make a pretty standard timing on this factory so we'll be able to go straight into vessels here nicely and uh, action does have these 11 mutas that are going to start being a little bit of a problem for Sharp, pressuring him and coming out onto the map and providing some counter pressure. He will want to get this army out onto the map as soon as possible, though, because right now this is the weakest point of the game for action. He's going to be trying to transition to going lurkers. There's going to be a small window, about a minute here, where Sharp could get across the map and do something with these plus one upgraded marines. But right now, action with so many mutas early on that Sharp's a little bit hesitant to do that. He doesn't want to lose any of these bioforces for free. And right now, action is looking very comfortable in the game state. Action feeling fine here, sitting on this high ground, just picking off marines whenever he can, dodging away from the stims and wasting some of this medic energy. Lurkers are being morphed here in a kind of an aggressive posture. I think that action might want to actually come forward here and try to take a position outside of action's natural or outside of sharp's natural excuse me and sharp realizing this very clearly he understands the position he's going to start building bunkers out in the front and that's a really interesting adaptation that i hadn't seen before uh yeah i mean you usually see this like when you're dealing with the early the lurker pressure builds or like two hatch lurker three hatch lurker but yeah, it's interesting to see that he's using this as like a zone control bunker to get to maintain the unit flow between his main and his uh, third base here. So he can use the, the potency of this high ground while also still securing the flank here. Coming into the natural expansion is action, taking out two of these turrets. Wants to soften up this expansion. Still has 10 muters. If you have low HP, they're probably not going to see too much in continued effort from those. He doesn't want to lose too many of those muters. He needs the map control while waiting for these defilers to pop. Has nothing as third base to defend right now. So these muters need to be all out of their current whole, two hole position lurkers here. He needs to bait these. He's going to 
to get his big splash hit on those Marines. Devastating for Sharp here as that bio ball just gets torn apart by that beautiful hot position lurker. Those subterranean uh, spines just decimating the bio forces of Sharp. His bio force is already low in number, and now it's even more dwindling in size. So I don't know how he's going to muster the kind of forces he needs to challenge action out on the map right now. He's going to be kind of in a bit of a panic mode here and a little bit of crisis management because there's no way he's going to be able to field an army strong enough to deal with action in the coming minutes. This is uh, a really strong play from action, man. Just getting out there, laying, uh, setting up the lurker landmine uh, in a, a very unexpected location. That is not the position that you would ever uh, imagine a lurker landmine would be uh, here for sharp. It's like, you know, you expect maybe on a ramp, maybe, you know, out in the middle of the map, somewhere like that, but just right up against this wall, totally catches sharp off guard. Really beautiful play from action to bait him into that with the Milas. And uh, th this all happened right before the vessels were coming out here. So really it's on sharp for moving out just seconds before we could have had vessels uh, in the front to actually, you know, prevent this type of thing from ever happening. And now he's moving out with a, a pretty decent force here of tank and a Marine, but a Marine tank push like this when defilers are already out in the field. I don't think that's going to work. Do you Shin? Not really saying it's, it's at least very tough to execute. You might the action might make a mistake, which could be punished, but it's, it's a little bit unlikely. Action's very confident in his Devila control. He's a very he's a very aggressive macro orientated Zerg. He's very used to these types of game states, especially. So this current situation is actually really strongly favoring him, both in terms of how good the game state suits him and also how much it suits his play style. So right now it's kind of actions games to lose, really. He has total control. He's trying to come around, see if he can intercept a vessel or something as it's coming out to the middle only expansion. Not gonna quite catch that. He needs to be ready to pre-split these mutas. I'm pretty sure he had them ready to pre-split. He does actually re doesn't react that well to this the radio. I'm surprised by that. I thought he was ready to split his mutas automatically, but wasn't even set up to do that. And now taking a lot of damage on these mutas. He's not aware of this follow-up radio. He's gonna lose pretty much the entire muta stack to that radio. That's a big value for Sharp. Now it's just the kind of tempo swing that he's looking for in this game to finally start to find some kind of foothold and control but is it too late there's only three gas available to action but he does have this mineral only providing the influx of minerals needed to build a very strong hydro defiler lurker link composition here and he's getting some beautiful plagues beautiful dousing of chili sauce on this terran force as well almost all of the army now moving up with this lurker link defiler gonna really put the pressure on our terran player here saying Ooh, both of those two tanks really not getting uh the value that they needed uh those units really not paying off and there we go picking off the two vessels here amazing play from action really getting some sick sick value uh, out of those defilers and lurkers and everything he's pushing in for the win right now but sharp is going to just roll the dice here try to get some lotto ships into the main base try to make something happen but there's the two scourge ready to stop this sharp is just about to get shut down here i think that's a really beautiful play there from action just using those two scourge to scare away the drops it's long enough for the lurker and defiler to come into the main base and set up a preemptive defense denying some of the potential damage in here but he's going to shuffle to the left hand side of the mineral line pressure the drones and also some units at the top hand side going to be getting the gas side of things as well forcing an uncomfortable position but action he tries to defend two fronts at once there's a little bit of a window here for action to find some good surface area to pick off some tech buildings like the spire maybe one of these evos maybe the pool some maybe there's some damage that action could uh, can find here and prevent action from getting too strong too quickly here in this game shutting down the gas mining in the main base alone is a pretty big deal and he's also killing a lot of drones he's maybe killed this pool here and that's a big big win here for sharks Shen. yeah that's way better than i expected man really getting some good damage done here uh when i thought that he was just going to get completely shut out of that main base but action still pushing forward he's got a bunch of lurkers here we do have fire bats to try and contest that but for now, he's just going to back away, let that bunker fall and buy himself some time. He does need to get a radiates on some of these defilers here to start pu to push this away from his natural. If this does get up here in the natural, if we get some uh, 
Dark Swarm here in the natural with a few lurkers. Things are going to go from bad to worse. Sharp going around the army here. He is going to get into position to potentially shut this down, but a plague should come out here. We do have one Dark Swarm, one Fire Bat actually in the mix. Underneath the Dark Swarm is going to push back all of these lurkers. That's a really healthy Fire Bat to have you really really good for this push slowing that down and cutting it off getting around behind these lurkers is massive actually being able to cut off the supply train here of this uh defiler push towards this natural is huge now he will be forced back eventually we will have more defilers coming forward here but this is buying him that little bit of time he needs to kind of stabilize here and start to get uh irradiates down on some of these defilers that are crossing the map yeah, attack was the best form of defense there for Sharp. He's just desperate in keeping these Defilers away from his rally point, away from this mineral-only expansion that he wants to get a foothold in. He needs to get some more minerals online right now. He has a little bit of gas banked up. But he has almost no minerals to spare. He needs to ramp up his production just a tiny bit here to have any hopes at trading cost efficiently. Look at action, though, just waiting in the wings, currently ahead on supply by about 18. He's looking really healthy in this game. He's going to start to devastate the Terran players. Not much of a foothold here for Sharp to work with. Just two siege tanks getting obliterated with that plague helping the lings chew through them and now with the dark swarms leading a pathway to this mineral only there's not really much hope for uh, sharp to stabilize his position anymore he's going to retreat to the safety of this bunker on the low ground allowing action to come in here and harass the mining with a follow-up attack waiting to come in here and do a lot of damage yeah lurker's gonna be burrowing under dark swarm here we don't have enough irradiates those earlier lost vessels hurting sharp so badly here and more vessels have been plagued as well more marines have been plagued he's just getting all clumped up here in his natural can't really have any room to maneuver here and with that being the case action shooting at fish in a barrel here with his plagues constantly hitting them onto all these marines and medics Sharp going to load up four dropships and try to leave right now, but Action is coming forward with a huge attack. Big plague on all of the dropships. These drops are ripe for the peaking now. Sharp going to try and unload everything in the main, but if there's even one Hydra here, everything's going to die. Okay, one Hydra is there. All of the dropships go down, but not before unloading quite a payload here into the main base. That's a lot of fire bats. There's quite a few Marines. We do have, you know, some... Defilers here, but for the most part, they're being shut down. There we go. One lurker does get burrowed underneath that dark swarm. That should be able to shut this down. And action just going to continue to close off the windpipe here of Sharp. He's got no more dropships here. The vessels are very, very low. Here comes those lurkers up into the natural. And GG is called. Action going to take us to our final game awesome awesome day of kcm here guys fantastic result going all the way to this final final match with action versus light that's coming right up okay hopping into our final game of the night it's gonna be light versus action and look at this light setting out his first scv one of his very early scvs to try and block this natural this has become kind of popular on dark origin it's something i first saw in a game of soccer i'm not sure if he invented it but uh he's been doing it a lot on dark origin it slows down the natural expansion by a lot and you can just see how much mining time is being lost here i think definitely this is worth it right uh yeah i think it's very worth it because at the very least it frustrates the timings of the zerg that probably their original game plan will be slightly out the window you'll not be quite as crisp as you'd like to be your mineral optimizations off you got a lot of lost mining everything just feels a little weird and the action's a pro gamer he's navigated these situations before he'll still do a pretty good job of it but it's still not a nice feeling soon no it's not and we're gonna see a very unorthodox play here from light with the ebay block into a 1-1-1 it looks like here with the wall on the high ground this is a very popular play on this map as well going into the 1-1-1 with that wall um but adding on the ebay block that just that just adds a new twist here to the 1-1-1 yeah i'm not sure if he can still go for two pot wraith with the ebay block but it's i guess it's possible he still will do a slightly mistimed two pot wraith i don't think he will though i think it will be one 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 just because it is a bit off with the timings of going that early ebay does kind of set you back a little bit as turn i'm not sure he'll still go for it but i guess it's possible that like this size doesn't crazy and just still go two pot wraith here against action i don't know 
You know what I think he's going to do is he's going to make a vulture mm -hmm. here and he's going to try and stop the sunken colony from starting because he delayed the hatchery by yeah. so much. Yeah. He's going to come here with two SCVs, run up to the front, try to block this with the one Marine coming out here. It's going to be really hard for action to make this sunken colony and then the vulture can be that much more effective. Yeah, I mean, he hasn't placed it down at the right time yet either. He needs to place that down around 3 minutes 30. It's a 2 point Wraith! It is going to be a 2 point Wraith! I'm so excited. I was I was wondering if he wouldn't do it just because of the eBay block, but then I was, I was, then I was still hoping for it. Meanwhile, the action did go for the fast 2 hatch Hydra opening to make sure he's safe against any kind of Vulture run by and 2 point Wraith. So he will have counterplay available to him. It's going to come down to Micro. Uh, it's, it's generally harder for the Terran player, assuming perfect play from both. But uh, honestly, like with good micro, there's so many ways the Terran can exploit the Zerg that I really like Light's chances in this game. He's one of the best in the business at two port Wraith as well. So we're going to see an exciting game here no matter what's saying, I think. Yeah, Light is nasty with the two port Wraith, man. His control is second to none, and his decision making with the Wraith is crazy, crazy good. He's one of the, those few players I've seen tear soma apart with two port wraith when soma is such a good you know solid zerg uh mutilus micro uh he's able to bring take bring him to his knees with counter attacks and you know split uh, options with those two port wraith uh with the wraiths flying around with their speed able to find you know damage no matter what uh you know soma decides to do with those it's really uh, common for the uh, pro, uh, the the Zerg player to keep all the mutilists together and just kind of chase the wraiths around and not allow them to get damaged. But Light is very good at like making small groups of wraiths, splitting them up and going all over the map to deal damage, and that can be really really frustrating to deal with. We'll see how Action manages to handle that here. He's managed to keep his first Overlord alive at least here at the Natural. I was wondering what he where he was going with those Hydras, whether it was for attack, um, but. He's actually just come here to save the Overlord, and he's managed to do that. I hope he's got range on the way, though, here, because as the Wraith number starts to build, you can actually out-micro uh, rangeless Hydralis. He has speed so far, but look at this. He's just running around and around, and he will pick off an Overlord here already. He's going to start to gun down some drones as well. Luckily, the Overlord died at the right time, though. It's not, not going to be hindering the production curve of action, which is why it's so important not to lose that first one, because it would have supply blocked him and prevented the additional hydrogen being made at home. A little bit of gambit there from action, trying to double dip here with his both aggression and defense here, trying to walk the tightrope by making the bare minimal units required to shield himself against these raids, while also threatening a counterattack. The reason why we see two SEVs on the ramp here for life, so you notice the potential of like seven or eight hydrogen just running up the ramp and gunning down this bunker and uh, that's what action's been threatening him the entire time with so it's keeping light a little bit less optimal in this game state but uh that's okay because uh light's very well versed in this in in dealing with this exact game state we see now he knows that the one way he can die is to these hydras coming in here so he's gonna uh, dot his eyes cross his t's and make sure nothing like that can happen and action can't get away with some cheesy play and instead it's gonna get his rate count higher and higher and then gonna start coming in here and one trying these drones yeah, it's coming in probably towards this main base. That's a lot of Hydra, though. This is pretty well defended by action. Now, this is a great setup here. One-shotting drones, uh, making things tough for action. But I think behind this, he's not going to keep producing uh, rates. He's going to make a quick switch into Marines and with a tank push, try to knock action out here. This is going to be really hard to handle. Okay, it's actually not going to be that. He's going to make a tank uh, with siege mode here for the high ground, but he's going to try and take his natural. Interesting. Yeah, he wants to maybe turn this into a mech play. Maybe it would be interesting here if he could just... I don't know, maybe this could be really good for him. If he can somehow not die in the next couple of minutes, I like might look pretty strong. And he's still got enough raves just to come in here and one-shot drones and you know volley down the overlords over and over again. So kind of does put a lot of pressure on action still, despite cutting the rave production at just five. So looking really scary as Light now, being very versatile in how he's approached. It's going to be taking the natural gas in advance of the floating as well, so he wants to make sure he's cranking out his gas quickly. It does look indicative that he wants to stay very tech-heavy and maybe not go for bio at all here, saying, I don't know. This is interesting, man. I like it from Light. Action, though, is playing a beautiful game of defense. Pr plenty of Hydras here. He hasn't had to add on too many spore colonies just the one spore at the natural which is i think a great addition here just making it really hard for those wraiths to come in at all 
and deal that damage and now he's going to be uh, transitioning here he's got what was that queen's nest on the way already so he's going to be going into yeah. a very fast hive here i love the the, the switch up here uh, despite you know just now getting that third base online or just starting to throw that down he's already going to be going into a hive he's going to have a very fast defiler tech to deal with these tanks and meanwhile, we're going straight to Science Facility from Light as well. That's why he's so desperate to crank out this second gas. He's going to need it. It's kind of hard to make Science Vessels and Tanks and all the other upgrades and what have you need going forward. He's still going to be cranking out um, potentially one or two more raves in this game at some point as well. Who knows if he wants to stay a little bit more active out on the map with these raves. He doesn't really need to, though. He can just, he's got enough here to cause a lot of problems. Not even getting in with the main base with this Overlord being denied due to the active usage of those raves. He is now going to be finally putting down the bio-infrastructure that he needs to go into a more standard game. He's got all the tech that he needs. He's got all the way up into Vessel Tech right now. So he's got his late-game tech online pretty much already. He just needs to now build some barracks and establish himself in the game. Get enough going they can actually try and try and transition to a fairly standard game this is a bit of a problem though action has double upgrades rolling right now and with the extra upgrades he's gonna be able to produce a crazy amount of hydra defiler here soon looks like might lose another overlord here on the escape this is just pure light micro he's so good at this stuff he's gonna get three two three overlords here and a drone no drone does manage to survive Getting out there with its life, but he's just going to continue to get damaged with this and hide his build. There's not been an overlord like in there to actually scout to see if he is going mech or what he's actually doing here. And action just going to be in the dark for now. He's got one lurker on the other side of the map. That's the closest he can get to the Terran base right now. Yeah, I mean, Light's done a pretty good job of getting crazy value out of these first five raves. He hasn't had to re reproduce anything else to fight with for quite some time. Everything else is just getting banked back at home, going straight into vessel production. He has two vessels already finished at around, about 10 minutes. He's going to have a pretty healthy amount of uh, irradiates to work with, considering he's only had one control tower worth of vessels being produced. So he's kind of optimizing the gas situation, but only having to produce one vessel at the time right now, which allows him to also squeeze out a few tanks, giving a nice little tank push timing here. And with a bit of a potential win condition, but there's a lot of hydras for action. As long as he can get good positioning, he might be able to overwhelm like small, small force here that will struggle to come out onto the map. This is a funny thing where if there's... Uh, a lot of hydras like there's, there's maybe a few tanks pushing out right it's, it's gonna be scary uh that the fight can swing insanely quick if you've got just enough marines and tanks all the hydras just disappear they just blow up into a cloud of red but if uh action has too much if he's got you know those links to tank and he has that overwhelming number of hydra then the marines just explode uh, they're not quick, you know, the medics won't be quick enough to heal them all. Um, and this, this fight can go really one-sided in, Zerg, in Zerg's favor instead. But it really only goes one way or another. It's very rare that we'll see, like, you know, one player um, still fight very well. Oh, God, he almost loses that vessel. But it's very rare to see it go, like, almost even within a fight like this. Yeah, well, the Defiler's already irradiated as well for um, Light. He's doing a great job of coming in here and skirmishing with action right from the get-go, taking control of this important triple bridge location, which is so hard to attack into, finally making his way across the center bridge, maybe baiting forward action a little bit to get more siege tank shots. Going to be pulling back there, though. Understands that action can just come across in a big way and challenge him, so he's going to be skirmishing backwards and forth, keeping his army fluid by remaining on siege. He's going to tactically withdraw now to the north, while these raves are harassing these lings on the left-hand side, trying to get some units of free. And look at this action. Just wants to dive onto this right-hand flank here and see if he can get positional advantage. But Light's already ready for it. Yeah, Light's ready for it. But look at this action. Going to dive forward. Should be backing away here with these lurkers. Don't want to be bleeding off lurkers to these tanks right now. This push is very, very scary. Action has the bare minimum he needs to hold on against this. But with plus one upgrade... Wow, he went into plus one attack for the lings. That is surprising. Yeah. I really thought he was going to go for a plus one for the, the hydras here because they do so much better against the marines, especially once the marines have plus one armor. Plus two is now done. Okay, he's got the advantage right now. He's actually going to shove forward here right as the tanks are unseaging. A huge plague. Oh my god, that plague. Absolutely insane. If action had brought the lurkers with that, 
I think he might have just completely destroyed that position, but as it stands, he's taken over control here, and he's going to start to shove forward once again. Here comes an Irradiate, but he should be able to get a Plague on the tanks. Big Plague on the tanks. No, a Dark Swarm going to be the option here that he chooses, but he can surround and kill at least two, three of these tanks. Very nicely done. Yeah, just 100 energy available to him at that present time. Just goes for the Dark Swarm option to clean up those tanks cost efficiently. Beautiful play. Complete tempo swing in this game. Now able to try and send a drone out. Take this fourth gas. Go into Ultralisk play. And really start to snuff out the light here. Light going to try to take that third base. He's sending vessels over to the right-hand side to try and, you know, lower the defenses over there. Wow, he kills the... Uh, cc they're very very painful stuff for light who really needs some more income you know this game it looks kind of normal right now but we've mined way more money from the main base than a normal game here for light absolutely we're already coming up to 15 minutes and the cc has only just now started so we'll have a situation where the terran will eventually be pretty much on only one base worth of economy potentially and due to the low drone saturation of action he won't quite be um leverage the same issues to deal with as well one thing going for action right now is a fairly late armor timing for light he's trying to optimize his weapon upgrades due to the early science facility which means these lurkers are still two shotting marines which is one thing that's really going action's way yeah, now the tanks on the low ground are going to start to try to deny this third base. We've got one Defiler here. A Plague does go down. This is so much from action. He's got a wow. bunch of Ultras coming out on the field right here, right now. He may be able to break this tank line. That's a lot of Marines kind of helping out, but the Ultras are pushing through. One more tank needs to be taken out to keep this uh, base safe here over on the center right, and he will be able to save that. He will be able to finish off that last tank, kind of being a little bit sloppy, not killing that right away, but he will clear it out, and now he can get the fourth gas online and really start to explode while Light is mining out in the main. He is just about there, just about mined out, and he has no third base. Wow, action. The macro monster Zerg in full control of the game right now. Light going to be shuffling over to the third base location. Going to get rid of those links that are hanging out there. Eventually try and float the CC and take that. Some preemptive irradiates going down on these incoming ultras as well. There is a def couple of defilers here making their way downtown. And they're currently in position to get some big plagues onto this bioforce. And a follow-up Dark Swarm as well. To isolate the rally point from coming out onto the map. There's another little game-winning situation here for action. Potentially good hard position under this swarm if you want wanted to and can instead just create a pathway leading to this natural expansion area and you're going to start diving into this position with his reinforcements now trying to end the game right here right now getting at the very least big cost efficient trades with light the only thing really is going for him is the fact that he's got his fleet of vessels which is somewhat unchallenged right now but right now i doesn't mind too much about that he can just plague those later right now he wants to do critical damage to the terran player yeah the defiler control here so so good man he's got such great um you know, game sense for how to control these defilers in these tight situations, throwing down the spells at the last possible second to get the absolute best value here. And he finally crushes through light, taking home a Zerg victory here. Wow, what a great, great final game. An awesome one to end it on, guys. That was fantastic. Let's take a look at the final results, the final scoreboard here as we close out week eight. Taking a look at the point rankings here, it looked like Protoss was going to cross out that Zerg logo, but instead giving it a little underline here to exclamate how great they played in week eight. Fantastic showing from Zerg, but those Zerg versus Terran matchups, man, heating up here in week eight. I'm looking forward to this semifinal. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, the Protoss apes that don't require as much practice as the other two races seem to be using their free time instead of driving their Bugattis, playing a game of Fortnite and building up to the skybox and then trying to get closer and building a roof over the Zerg and Terran here and really just starting to mock them as they uh, laugh from their stratosphere orbit. Meanwhile, we see Zerg quite close behind on nine points, just one or two weeks away from being able to maybe contest that final spot. Instead, Going to be having to deal with a Zerg versus Terran semi-finals, which I'm super stoked for saying. Terran have also been performing pretty good on TVZ recently, especially in some of those recent games we've been privy to. So I'm kind of excited for that. I don't see how we're going to have a bad semi-finals here. The only thing I'm worried about is somehow Terran getting the better of Zerg, then we're left with a PVT finals. And I'm, I think that'll go pretty one-sided for Protoss. Yeah, that's... Uh... 
not the optimal situation. I think we'd much rather see these ZVP finals. Um, I wonder if that's going to be reflected in the future of the ASL. Guys, we really appreciate you guys stopping by and hanging out here at the KCM, despite you know, having that ASL ongoing here. I want to make sure that everybody knows not to give any spoilers for either the KCM or the ASL in the comments or anywhere in the Discord aside from the discussion page for the ASL and KCM spoilers. Um, I recently got spoiled for the first round of the ASL uh, by someone sending me a direct message. So they have been blocked. Total piece of shit move though guys do not do that for yeah. your fellow starcraft enjoyers this is this is the the best season of the year man this is the this is asl season we've got tons of great games coming out from both asl and kcm and so make sure not to spoil any of the results for your fellow gamers man please or karma will come for you absolutely guys and we're gonna end on that note thank you so much for joining us been a great week and we'll see you in the semifinals.